It was the first year that human civilization was on the road to extinction, and the planet was surrounded by various energies that were raging around it. All the people on Earth have already accepted the fact that they are destined to survive in a city overrun by incredibly scary monsters. But at the same time as the monsters came, many people manifested incredible power and gained great recognition and fame. There were also people who could only feel the power, but could not awaken it. Such people were also chosen to be near those who had the power. At that time, other people who did not have any power lived a simple life and actively used the latest technologies that allowed them to greatly expand their perception of the world. At that moment, one guy was also using such a holographic panel, and he was very emotional. He said that the game he found was very cool. He said that the game was a real novelty because he had never seen it before. His name was Lin Yu. He was a simple high school student, and he was very excited when he read the instructions for the game, and it said that the girl had to be rescued. At one point, someone pushed him hard, and he shouted to let Liun Yu go because the car of the person who woke up was driving by. There was indeed a car driving there. It was surrounded by other cars, which were police cars, as well as two military jeeps. All the people gathered around and watched with delight. People were shouting that the Awakened One had arrived, saying that they could not believe that they were seeing such a famous person alive. Leung Yu also turned around, but he was not delighted, and on the contrary did not understand what was so special about those Awakened, he decided to continue playing the game. He was very excited about the game, he said he was all ears and ready to start. The system voice said that he needed to put his hand in a special place. He did what he was told without hesitation and was very surprised by what began to happen there. Suddenly, some very strong energy began to be released. At that moment, he was not having so much fun because he realized that his arm was starting to tighten. In an instant, that girl seemed to be free, and the system said that the download was complete and that the shadow system was officially launched. He could not stretch out his hand. He was even more surprised when he heard about a system of shadows, and at that moment a very strong light appeared and blinded him. That light would be just like the sun, and he could not look at it, he asked. What is this? Suddenly his hand came loose, and when he fell on the column, he began to think that something was moving in his shadow. He wondered with great surprise what it was. And at that moment, a blue silhouette of a man began to rise from his shadow. It was like a copy of him, but it was like a spirit. It was all blue and radiated blue energy, which was like fire. When he saw this, he was even more astonished, thinking that the blue man had appeared from his shadow. In a moment, special messages from the system began to appear in front of him, congratulating him on the fact that he was able to inherit the shadow system and merge with it. And if he fulfills the system's tasks, he will be able to gain experience and rewards. That shadow looked very majestic. He said that it was the system from the popular novels. He was delighted. He said it was very cool. Then the system told him that the shadow can only be seen when used. The system advised him that he should use it in combat in order to complete the task. Finally, he fully realized that this was his new evolutionary shadow and he could control it. He realized that this might be a reward for saving that beautiful girl from the game and the shadow completely repeated his movements. At that moment, he thought about the beautiful girls, that now he had a chance to get them to pay attention to him. Without wasting a minute, he began to see what tasks were available to him. The system told him to control a shadow to destroy an ant in the garden, and Lunui said it was a simple task. He quickly sent his own shadow to attack, and it immediately began to fly toward the grass in search of ants. After a moment, the shadow began to shrink very sharply, and Lunui was surprised because he thought it would just start trampling on the ground around him. In a matter of seconds, the shadow found its first victim, and it instantly struck first. That shadow had extraordinary fighting skills, and although it was the size of an ant, it was still as strong as a man. Liung Yu was also very surprised to see his shadow fight so well, and at that moment the grass showed flashes of light from the fierce battle. After a few moments passed and the task of killing ants was completed, the system asked him if he wanted to receive the reward. Leonui was very happy. He shouted happily that he wanted to receive it. At one point, a light appeared above him. It began to shine on him. He raised his hands because he thought he should feel something. 
When the light disappeared, he was shocked because his hands began to emit a very intense blue energy. He started to cry. He thought that he definitely started to feel something. He thought it was the energy of the flow. He was very happy. He could not believe what had happened, he thought. He couldn't even dream of awakening. But now he had a chance. He began to run joyfully and said that he felt the energy of the stream, so he had a chance to awaken. When he ran past those people, they started talking about him, asking if he was from the Lee family. They said he probably didn't know anything else because he wouldn't have come to that place. Liun Yu started running joyfully to his own house and did not even notice that there were many people and soldiers standing around. He walked into the house and shouted happily to his mother that he had succeeded. In an instant, he saw a horrible picture. His mother was being held hostage and there were many soldiers around. His mother screamed to him to run away from that place as fast as possible. At that moment, he was stunned and shocked, for those he saw were the awakened ones. Suddenly, while he was realizing what was happening, someone began to kick him from behind. The man put Liunyu on the ground in a second and put a gun to his head and said that they were not letting anyone go. Liunyu started shouting, why the hell did they break into his house? The man replied very seriously that during the mission, Liun Yu's father had escaped, and that was why the whole group had died, and they were now investigating. Liun Yu shouted that this could not be because his father always protected people first and thought of himself later. The man repeated that it was just an investigation, and that if everything he said was true, he did not need to be so nervous about it. But that man said that his mother would have to go with them anyway. He started acting on instinct at that moment, in an instant. He managed to make a very quick lunge forward. The soldiers who were there did not expect such actions from him. Was that tall man himself surprised that this happened? Because at first he didn't even notice that his gun was missing from his hands. Liun Yu quickly raised his gun up and shouted again that his father was definitely not a traitor. He said loudly that they should let his mother go. The soldiers started laughing and said that a person with flow energy could use that gun. So what was that boy going to do with it? When another soldier told him not to play with the gun, Liun Yu's energy started to show very strongly, and he said again that they should not dare to touch his mother. After a moment, those soldiers noticed that the special feature of that gun started working and it was ready to fire. They shouted that the guy had to be stopped. But at that very moment, Liun Yu, being in a very strong emotion, pulled the trigger, and a very large and strong energy came out of that gun. In that energy was hidden a special ball, which was traveling at a very high speed. That bullet approached the head of the exalted warrior in a second, and in another second it would destroy him. There was a very loud and strong sound, and the exalted man fell backward from the impact, and his hat flew off his head. Then Lun Yui realized the power of a man who has the power of the awakened one. That man was just able to catch that bullet from its extremely fast flight. It was just incredible. After that, he began to walk up to Lun Wei rapidly and began to say that he did not think he had a flow of energy. He also said that now they had every right to detain him. His mother saw the situation and told her son to obey the orders of the military. At that moment, he started to cry, and his mother said that she did not know he had flow energy, and it was a pity that she and his father would not see him grow up. She told him to continue training hard, and he would have a good future and from that moment he was left alone. Those people turned around and started to leave. The man said that he believed that his father was not guilty, but they had some things to check. And when he was out the door, he said that if Lun Yu wanted to help his father, he should wake up as soon as possible. He took a book off the shelf and said that he had only one week, because the next Friday was the awakening test, and it was only once a year. He immediately decided to ask the system how much experience is needed for awakening. The system replied that a 100,000 units of experience are required for awakening, but that the owner can also exchange the energy of the flow for experience. He immediately thought that if he killed a 100,000 ants in a week, he would be able to wake up, and the system immediately informed him that it could work in auto mode. Then he realized that he could make the shadow fight on its own. Without wasting a moment, he told the system to activate the auto mode and his shadow flew into battle. Leung Yu said that he should not put all his hopes in the shadow, but should spend the next week practicing, for the more he has the power of the flow, the more chances he has of awakening. The rough book he took was called 100 Ways to Feel Energy.
At that moment, he remembered how he had played with his father when he was little, and his father had told him that he would protect him. Now the time has come for him to protect his own father and mother. Very quickly, those seven days passed, and that city was called the City of the Happy Wind, and this was the 16th school. The teacher said that important guests would come to their school that day, and he also said that if it turned out that some of them did not have the power of the flow, he hoped that they would continue to work for the good of society. And those who can feel the energy of the flow will be able to join the army and become a great defender of their world. And the one who awakens will become a hero, respected by hundreds of thousands of people. Only one in ten thousand will become awakened. He added that even if no one among them has energy, he will still be proud of them. He shouted loudly that they were all the hope of their country. And at that very moment, the door to the classroom opened abruptly. It was Liun Yu. He was very out of breath and could barely speak. Can he come in? He started to catch his breath and immediately said that he apologized for being late. There were a lot of people in that big hall and they all came up to a special stand where they were checked to see if they had energy. He barely made it to the very last group. When he looked around a little bit, he noticed that there were quite a few students there, and he thought that probably many students had changed their minds about taking the test. Suddenly, guys started coming up to him. Jianfei was in the center. He was the son of a big businessman in Mustang. He said that Lunui had changed his mind about giving the exam. And the boy's friends said that they all knew what his father had done and why he thought he could have the power of the stream. They called him a loser and laughed at him. At that moment, other students joined in the condemnation and began to say disparaging things about him. Suddenly, another student came up to the malls, and he immediately began to tell Jianfei to go away and leave Lu Nui alone, and to stop being jealous of the girl who was dating him. <laughs> it was Liung Yu's best friend. His name was Zhang Kai, and he said there was no need to bark. Jiang Kai also began to say to everyone that they had forgotten how he had helped them all. And when he was in trouble, they all attacked him. In a moment, the group of students who wanted to bully Liu Nyu dispersed. Liu Nyu immediately thanked him for his help, and Jiang Kai began to smile and said that it was his duty, and he immediately asked what the situation was with his father. He said that the investigation was still ongoing and they had to leave because it was his turn soon, and some girl appeared behind him, calling him. She asked if he had come to watch her pass the exam on purpose. Leonui said that he had come to take the exam himself. She said that she had heard about his father, and although it was not the right time, there was something else she wanted to tell him. Leung Yu was very surprised because she was his girlfriend, and she said that a few days ago she felt a flow of energy. She began to say that she knew it would sound selfish, but she wanted to fulfill a very old dream of seeing the world. Therefore, she apologized to him, and it meant that their relationship was over. At that moment, he was very disappointed. He realized that everyone around him was a corrupt egoist. He abruptly started to walk in the other direction and said that he understood her and wished her good luck. He headed straight for the stage. His friend noticed him and called him over, but Liun Yu didn't stop. He was going up the stairs, and at that moment, it was Jin Fei's turn. But when Liun Yu approached, he simply threw him aside. Jian Fei started shouting that why the hell was Liun Yu getting in without a turn, or had he not realized where he belonged? He began to quickly put his hand to that device and said very loudly that it was because he was awakened. And in an instant, a very powerful and strong energy began to radiate from that device. And this time it was purple in color. They were all shocked. Now they understood why he came up so confidently, because he was really awakened. Now he was standing before them, and they were all looking at him as if he were a god. But in a moment, his debut state was broken by his friend, who jumped on him from behind and began to congratulate him. In a moment, a man appeared there and said that from that moment on, no one would dare to look down on him. The man said that he did not think that any of those children had the power of the Ascended Ones, but now he had given it to Lunya. The box contained the sign of the awakened one, and from that moment on he would have special rights. The man added that they would be waiting for him to come and check in at their institution. Their office of energy masters in that city would be waiting for him. Suddenly they heard a girl's voice, and they turned around. It was the same girl who had just left him. She wanted to say something. 
Lunum began to tell her to give him time to think about it, because it was very complicated. But when he passed her, he said that it might sound selfish, but he wanted to see the world, so he didn't want to see her. As soon as he came home, he was able to talk to his mother. He said that he was able to wake up, and now his father will not be prosecuted. But he needs the best treatment. He said that everything was fine with him and that he would try to visit his father in the near future so that she would not worry about him. When he finished the conversation, he looked at that Fluxer icon and thought, this is what it is. That icon can be used as a spatial hiding place and it can also transfer him to a three-dimensional virtual space. He immediately decided to take advantage of this opportunity and enter that virtual space, and the system said that the virtual space would open soon because the user was being verified. The system scanned his badge and reported that the verification was successful and that Liun Yu could enter the virtual space. In an instant, the whole space around him began to change, and everything around him glowed. And in a moment he appeared in that special space, he was confused. He noticed some very strange shapes of people, he said right away. They looked very creepy. Suddenly, he started turning very sharply because someone was approaching him very noisily and quickly from behind. It was a big pink bear running toward him and laughing loudly. Liun Yu was shocked, he thought. What the hell is going on there? When he approached, he bowed and said that he was an assistant and his name was Pedro. He also said that this was his own virtual world and that he could learn different fighting skills and techniques in it. It was a very important place to grow his strength. He went on to say that he had prepared those two virtual models for both of them. Lunui was surprised because he was the only one there. Pedro told Liung Yu not to try to trick him because he could clearly see that there were two of them. Then Lunui pointed to his big shadow and asked if he meant her. He was surprised that in that space, his shadow was shown as a separate person. And he also thought that the shadow should not feel the limitations of this space. And they started creating virtual characters. In a short time, Lun Yu was completely changed. He noticed that the clothes fit him perfectly, and his tan also got clothes and even a human face. Liung Yu was surprised when Pedro said that they were ready, and he would introduce them to the virtual world right away. And in a moment, he felt as if the floor was disappearing beneath him and he was falling. And so it happened, the floor completely disappeared and they all started to fall. After a few moments of falling, he noticed that they were rapidly approaching a light. As a result, they appeared from the cloud in some other world, but they still continued to fall. A second later, they landed successfully and Leung Yu was amazed at the beauty of the place they had landed. Pedro began to say that time in the other world flows three times faster. Therefore, people in the virtual world have three times more time. Liu Nui said that he now understood why all the famous people want to enter that virtual world. Suddenly, a woman began to say that everyone should watch because a man from a noble family had challenged Master Google from the Temple of the God of War. Liu Nui was surprised by what he saw on that big screen, a real battle. Pedro said that the whole space is like a big battlefield that the system copies human skills and abilities and applies them in battle, and that many people practice their own techniques in that place. When Leung Yu told them to move on, Pedro thought he wanted to get into a fight against someone. In an instant, he made sure that the spatial battlefield was launched and the enemy's selection was launched, and the land began to disappear again under Lun Yu. He was transported to another place again, while he did not realize where he was. Suddenly, some objects began to appear in his hands. It was like a sword and a gun. He didn't understand what it was and why he needed it. But in an instant, his reflexes kicked in, and he very quickly dodged the arrow that was flying straight at his head. It was very fast and beautiful the way he dodged that attack. As soon as he got back on his feet, he immediately pointed his gun at the man who had shot the arrow. He stood calmly on the branch of a large tree and looked down, and he said that Lo Nui was lucky. It was clear from his face that he was an experienced fighter in that world and that he had been there for many days. Liun Yu had not yet fired a shot. He was waiting, but he kept the enemy in his sights. In an instant, that stranger began to load a new arrow very quickly. He said that it was the first battle and the newcomer got him, so he could only wish him good luck. Once again, Lun managed to avoid being wounded and successfully jumped to the side. That enemy was surprised by the fighting tactics that Lonui showed, but he thought that this time he could hit the target. 
While the archer searched for him and said that the boy could not hope to escape from him, Lun Yu took up his position and waited. He started charging a new arrow and said that the guy just took a hit and they would be done with that game. But a few moments passed, and the archer did not notice the enemy. He continued to creep into the depths of the forest. At that moment, a voice came from behind the archer, asking if he was being cheated by the yogi. The archer was very frightened. He fell into a stupor. He thought he was very relaxed. And right after that, Leung Yu raised his gun and blew off the head of that impudent man. Leung Yu said that the archer had not heard the saying, Even a cornered beast continues to fight? And the archer relaxed only because he thought his opponent was a beginner. He also said that there was no need to say GOP until he jumped, because even the ants near his house were stronger. For a moment, he was astonished. For when the archer's body began to disappear, a yellow sphere appeared. Suddenly, it began to fly very fast in his direction. He did not know what it was and how to act, or was it a new manifestation of the enemy? And in another second, that sphere, and in addition to it, other smaller spheres of blue color simply entered his body. Those colored things knocked him off his feet. He had never felt such a sensation before. He said that something entered his body. Suddenly, a system plate appeared. He said that it was the first time he felt an entity entering him. And he also received an award, a rank A technique admiralty cover. The system also explained that when he defeats the master of the energy flow in the virtual world, he can get an entity, for which he can later buy equipment and skills in the game store. In an instant, the technique he had learned manifested itself. Now he was taking 30% less damage, and with each level, the resistance was increasing greatly. Leung Yu was excited and said he wanted to try it as soon as possible. He started shouting for Pedro's assistant, and in a moment, he appeared from behind the bushes on his backside. He told Pedro that he was willing to try another fight. The selection of players began, and again the terrain was changed. Leon Hui said that changing the terrain was quite tiring. When he turned around, he was surprised. He asked if she was his opponent. A beautiful girl was coming at him, armed with a pair of knives. Leon Yu began to hesitate and said that he was surprised that a girl was against him because he did not fight with girls. But at the same time as he was speaking, his weapon began to appear in his hand. He immediately took aim very quickly and fired a shot. He said if he wanted to win, he had no choice. But the girl was not a beginner and was able to deflect the bullets that flew at her. She was outraged and angry. She said that he decided to attack her out of the blue. Isn't he ashamed of himself as a man? He repeated that he was going to win, and in war all methods are good. Immediately afterwards, he began to strike with his sword. But the girl was nimble, and she began to do flips and thus dodge. She landed and began to speak. Is he a commoner? And Long Yu did not understand her and asked what kind of commoners. They continued to attack each other, and the girl said that she didn't even know about the commoners, so she was definitely one of the commoners. Leonui was confused. He kept asking her what she was talking about, and at the same time, he was repelling her powerful attacks. After that, she did a few more backflips to get backwards. She said it was time to end that fight and took a very strong breath of air. Immediately afterward, her body was covered with very strong energy, which was swirling around her as if she was preparing for a powerful attack. In an instant, she opened her eyes, and it was immediately clear that her strength had increased many times over. It flew by Leung Yu with lightning speed so fast that he couldn't even do anything. But in a second, his nerve connections sent massive signals to his brain that he had suffered massive damage. This girl was, in fact, not at all what she seemed at first glance. She was like a hidden murderer. Only a few seconds after her attack, the consequences began to show. They were terrible. She managed to strike more than a dozen blows. Lun Yu just started screaming from the pain he was feeling. She watched him suffer and be in pain. That technique was called a thousand cuts, 36 forms, a top-class attacking technique. She did not look at him anymore because she thought that he was already defeated and that in a moment his body would be gone. But what was her surprise when she heard him breathing very loudly as if he was about to have an attack? She began to turn sharply to finish him off. And with lightning speed, he approached it and with one blow was able to divide it into two parts. She was shocked. She said that it simply could not be unless he had something, he said. That it was very painful and he thought he was going to lose. 
He said that that girl's technique was definitely an ancient cultivator's attack technique, and it was good that his technique was able to take some of the damage. The system congratulated him and told him that he had received 70 space elements, and now he could open a chance to learn that powerful attacking technique. He was surprised that he got such a big reward. He thought that probably the stronger the opponent, the bigger the reward. He decided that since he was doing so well, Pedro should find him another opponent because he needed to maximize his moisture. But that big scoreboard in the city was always showing his fights, and people watching were impressed, and some said that the newcomer was annoying him. He said that it was very humiliating to lose to one of the commoners. He also added that that Liun Yu faced the majestic thousand-cut technique and was able to survive, he must definitely have some rare defense technique. Three days passed, he wandered around the city because he could not find a hospital. He said that his father had come to a big city for treatment, but chose some lost hospital. He continued to think about the hospital in the middle of nowhere and whether they were treating him properly. Suddenly, he heard a very familiar voice of a girl begging to be left alone. In a narrow street, there was a group of men who pushed a girl against the wall and began to persuade her to have a drink and go for a walk with them. She apologized and said that she had really important things to do. The man said that he knew her father was in the hospital and that he needed money, so he offered her some extra money. But suddenly, a full basket of groceries flew right into the man's head. That girl and those men were shocked because it happened so suddenly. Liun Yu started to approach them and said that if they wanted to have fun, they should choose another place. He started picking the fruit and said that everything was spoiled because of it and he had bought the fruit for his father. Therefore, they will all have to pay him for the damage he has suffered because of them. The girl asked how Liun Yu felt about his decision to fight them. He abruptly told her to stay there and not move, because they might start doing something. The man whom Liun Yu was cooking with the basket pulled out a knife and started to get very angry, asking if he even knew who he was. In an instant, Liun Yu kicked his knife out of his hand and said that he was a real trash. He stood there shocked. He was in a stupor from who they met. He was so brazen. And a moment later, Lanui kicked him in the head. He did not expect such speed from a mere passerby. In a few moments, Liun Yu defeated them all and sat on one of them and rummaged through his things. He found money and was very happy because it was a great compensation for the fruit they had spoiled for him. Suddenly, the beaten man began to say that they had already been beaten and robbed, so maybe the savior would let them go. Leonui began to say, what kind of nonsense did that man say? He said that the girl was his favorite older sister. As they walked away, Leonui said that as soon as they met, she was always in trouble. But he said that this time it was okay, because if he hadn't found her, he wouldn't have found the hospital. At that moment, the man offered him his business card, so that if he needed help, he would be happy to help. He would come to his aid. But in the nearest trash can, Liun Yu threw that business card away. He started asking his sister why the man said she was looking for money, because Leon Nui knew that she had a job and that she had money. Is it possible that her father's treatment is so expensive that she doesn't have enough money? She said with a sad look that her father's injuries were so severe that they had already used up all the savings they had been saving for several years but she said they would have enough to keep him in the hospital for a little while longer. He was a little surprised. I told him that this was the situation and told him not to worry anymore, that he would take care of all the other expenses because he was awakened and now money was not a problem for him. He also said that his sister was very good and that she did a very good job for her father and family. They came to that hospital and Lunjuk told his sister to go upstairs and he would pay all the bills first. My sister began to enter the ward, and my mother immediately began to take care of her and offered her a drink of water. Her father also said that they must have tired her out because she was always running around helping them. The daughter said that now they did not have to worry about paying for the hospital. The father said that he knew his old work friend would be able to lend them money. Suddenly, Leon Yu came into the room and said that he did not remember them serving in the army together. He asked the father how he was feeling. The father sharply replied that if his lousy son was not in the ward, he would feel better. It was very strange for Lune to hear such a stellar response from his father. But my father continued to talk and said, why was Leon Wai so crooked? 
My father said that he was lying there normally, and that he had no legs for everything. His father was indeed missing his legs, and Liun Yu was shocked because he did not think the injuries were so serious. My father started to talk about why Yunul was cringing so much as if the sky was falling. He said that the most important thing was that he was alive, because he had already gone far enough. Then the father continued to tease him about where his son could get so much money to pay for treatment. Liun Yu began to say that hadn't he told them all that he had energy and had become awakened, and that was why the money had appeared. My father started laughing very loudly at the fact that Lo Nui said he was awake. His father began to mock him, asking if he was okay with being naked, because he would never have believed that his son could feel energy. In an instant, Liun Yu turned around and left, he said. He was not going to listen to the ridicule. My father said that they had offended the great awakened warrior. Suddenly, he picked up a large briefcase from the ground and told Liu Nui to take it with him. He said that this was the same military equipment that his father cherished. My father said that it could greatly enhance the fighting power of the awakened one. Liu Nui asked if his father was really ready to give him such a valuable thing. His father said that as long as he was in this condition, he would not need it anyway. The father also added that, of course, he would not be able to use this thing thoughtlessly because a person simply cannot master such power. And for the awakened ones, for those who can feel energy, such a thing is of great importance. Liu Yu began to say that he would only take the thing for a little while and then return it to his father. And he also said that his father should not worry because he would be able to use it again in the future because he would definitely find a way to get him back on his feet. Liu Nui told me to activate that combat equipment. After that, that big case began to open and there was special equipment inside. Immediately afterwards, various details began to emerge from the case, and Liu Nui said that the combat equipment was meeting a new owner. His parents were shocked. They did not believe what Liu Nui told them until the last moment. When the equipment was fully put on him, his father said that the boy must be awakened. A little time passed and Liu Nui went home to pack his things. He said that tomorrow he would go to the castle of the heavenly cloud, and he had never had a chance to go there before. A new day had come, and it was the Fluxer Guild of the City of Happy Wind. Various people gathered there and told young Mr. Liu that he would definitely become awakened. There was also Lodz, he was number one in the city, and his father was so strong that he was able to achieve the highest skill. He thought that the city of the Happy Wind was very strange and miserable, and he said to his son that if he did not want to be there, he could return with him. It was the man's son, his name was Zi Fen, who said to his father that he wanted to feel like a commoner. There was also a girl there who said that the day had finally come when she would be able to see her grandfather. She was the granddaughter of the head of the Craftsmen's Association. Those ordinary people looked at those young people and said that there were many talented awakened people that year. Zi Fen said that that year there was one guy who was unknown to anyone, and he also awakened. His comrades carried him on a special chair, and they shouted for everyone to welcome the great awakened Lun Yu. Those ordinary people were surprised by the performance they saw, and they began to think that Lun Yu was just a strange braggart. Zifan started laughing and told his father to look at that crazy man. He said that maybe he had mental retardation. Lun Yu himself thought it was a bad idea. He felt very depressed. All the people who gathered there looked at him, and most of them did not take this act very well. That girl, like everyone else, noticed him. She said that he was the one who had recently awakened. After a while, a woman appeared there. She said that the time was almost here and that all newcomers should come to her. The woman said that they would have to line up in pairs, and as soon as she called their name, they would have to howl out of the line. In an instant, the division began and a large portal opened there, radiating strong energy. Lonyu himself was shocked. He had never seen such a spectacle of real energy in real life. Lodzik was sent to the front first. He was told to go to the front. His teammate Jandeksun, he was immediately very happy because he was second. 292. Then the names of Leonoji and Leonyu were called, and at that very moment the girl caught him by the hand and pulled him along. She turned to him and looked at him with a very sweet look. She said that they would be friends. Liu Nyu was a little shy. He said that he was also very happy to meet them, and he thought that she had a very beautiful voice. It was a sky cloud castle called Tianyun, a very large structure that flew around the clouds. 
He was simply amazed that the city really didn't look like any city he had known before, and the girl Lunogie asked him in surprise if he didn't already know what she was. Lunyu was further surprised when she said that she had heard from her father that the city was constantly moving across the sky. Suddenly, a man appeared there and said that the city was really constantly in motion. It was done so that monsters could not attack the city, because they live in a world where they are not welcome. It was the director of the academy, his name was Tianan, and he asked everyone to follow him. Those new students listened carefully to what he was saying. He said that in the next three years, the academy would become their home and headquarters. He called everyone against to their bus and continued that they should all know that at the moment there are seven flying fortified castles, but their goal is to become real awakened and make that place their home. As the new students looked at the view from the window, the principal continued, saying that each flying castle governs its own district. For example, Tianyun governs 136 cities. Every day, new awakened people move to such castle cities. These cities are also responsible for training those newly arrived awakened ones so that they learn the theory well and experience real combat training. They also help them to become true awakened ones and in the future to become single warriors. The director also advised them not to rejoice prematurely if they pass the entrance exam, because such an exam is held every year after six months have passed since the start. Another very important point is that tournaments will be held there. Depending on the ratings for the tournaments, people who live in the cities that are under Zhongzhou's jurisdiction will get so much food. So he said that they will need to do their best because people will be relying on them. Therefore, the director hopes that they will train very hard and show good results. That flying bus started to land, and the director said that the whole life of the city takes place in that corner, and if any of them had any questions, let them ask. Li Yunyu immediately decided to ask the director something. All the students immediately paid attention to the question for the principal. Li Yunyu said that he had recently fought a girl in a virtual arena, and he had defeated her, but her strength was a little different from normal. The director was shocked when Li Yunyu said that the girl had energy combined with the power of fire. The other students also heard what Lu Nui said, and they were surprised. The principal asked if he had understood correctly that the newcomer had managed to smash the girl with the dark energy to smithereens. When he realized what he had heard, he was stunned that the newcomer had been able to defeat the carrier of the dark energy flow. The other guys started saying that there should be a limit when he stopped bragging, and they also asked how he could have met her at all since he was a newcomer. Luna was already wondering what kind of power it was. Was it really that rare? The director sharply replied that this power was not just rare, but unattainable, especially for a simple beginner like him. The girl began to explain to him that the attribute of the dark energy of the flow is fire, and that dark energy has incredible destructive power. Dark energy is manifested only in special awakened ones, and then only in one in several thousand. If he was able to defeat such a girl with such energy, then he is really very cool. Liu Yu asked her if she believed him and if she thought he was bragging. The girl sincerely replied that she believed him. She began to say that how can one say that a person is weak when that person has not yet shown the real strength that he or she possesses? She went on to say that they needed to hurry up because they needed to be the first to get to the dormitory. They came, and the director said that this was their new place to live. They could choose their own rooms. While Li Yu was looking at the building, the other students decided that Luo Jin was the strongest and should be the first to choose a room. While they were making noise, Li Yu turned to them and asked them if they had already chosen, for he had already chosen. He thought that because his room was on the side, he could learn how to control the shadows. Suddenly, a guy came up to him and told him not to think that he could decide everything himself. He asked Liung Yu how dare he choose a room before Luo Jin chose it. He also asked if he even understood the rules, and Leon Yun just ignored him. Suddenly, the guy in the green sweatshirt also chose a room, and the one who wanted to set some rules was defeated. When he entered that room, he immediately noticed that it was very nice, much better than his apartment. He was in a very good mood. He immediately decided to start training the shadow and said that the shadow system was activated. But the system did not start, and the display showed a message that the system was being updated due to a change of residence. He was surprised that the system still had updates. 
The next day, Lion Yu came to class and said hello, looking like he hadn't slept well. But when he entered, he noticed that there was no one else in the class except that girl. He asked her why she was sitting there alone, or did everyone else decide to collectively skip the first class? She began to explain that this is because the first class is an introductory class. It is for those who have recently awakened. It tells all the basics of the world about the power, the monster, and many other things. Many newcomers had prepared and completed the theory before they arrived in that city because they had awakened a couple of months ago, and that class was for those who had awakened at the last moment. He said that now he understood everything, that he thought it was all done for the two of them, and he thanked her for coming, because he would not have felt comfortable if he had been alone. A few minutes later, their teacher came. His name was Lai Boven, and he was surprised that someone came to that lesson for the first time. He also asked this Lunodse why she came. She approached the teacher and said that she had come to meet the teacher on purpose and asked him how he was doing. He was surprised because the girl spoke to him as if they were old friends. And as a result, she came out of the classroom and told him to study hard because it was very important. Lung Yu thought that he was the only fool in that class after all. So the teacher said to him that it's probably not very cool to be alone in class, right? And the teacher suggested that he change his seat. They climbed to the top of the building and sat there and drank drinks. The teacher asked Lung Yu that he knew nothing about power, but did he get it? The teacher began to say that the progression of the power of awakening is as follows. There is the black crystal, the silver crystal, the golden crystal, and the rainbow crystal. When the awakened one has passed through all these levels, then he will become a master of flow. Then Liu Yu jumped down and said that it was time to talk about the main thing, to exceed his current level and develop energy. The teacher said that in order for him to become stronger, he needed to break through his vital points. The awakened one can awaken the twelve flow points in his own body. Awakening points on the feet and calves awaken agility. Points in the lower arms and hands develop strength, and awakening points in the head strengthen reflexes, intelligence, the five senses, strength of mind, and much more. But the teacher said that he would be able to awaken those points only when he reached the black crystal. Leo Nui continued to ask the teacher how to awaken those points, what should be done to do so. The teacher stood up and said that in fact, those points were not so difficult to awaken. You need to kill enough monsters and absorb their flow energy. Leo Nui thought about the idea of killing monsters. Three days later, all students were called in the morning to announce the information. Suddenly, a guy approached Liu Yu and asked if he was the guy who goes to theory classes every day. His name was Hu, and he said that it turned out that there were still some of them left and that Liu Yu was probably very strong. He was disappointed that Hao had picked on him. He probably hates people like him. And Hao went on to say that he and the director had trained hard in those days and learned a lot of new things. Suddenly, a teacher knocked him from behind and said that he was always causing him trouble and ordered him to stand in line. He said that they were all used to seeing him as a discreet and polite informant. But that day, they will have the practical lesson they have all been waiting for. Leon Yu couldn't believe his ears. He was finally looking forward to practicing. The teacher told them all that they should break into pairs and go to different places to practice. And the task on that beautiful day will be to destroy ten monsters. Lo Nui was even more excited, thinking that this was exactly what he needed. And the teacher continued to say that the monsters would not spare them, and it would be really dangerous. As soon as he noticed that they were really in danger, only then would he intervene. The girl Liu Nudes was looking for Liu Nu in the crowd. But suddenly she noticed that Lao Tzin began to approach her. He asked her if she would mind if they were paired. At that moment she was confused and did not know how to refuse him because she did not want to be paired with him. She started to make up a story that Lods was very strong, but she was thinking about something else. But suddenly, Liun Yu raised his hand and waved to that girl. He asked her if she didn't want to be paired with him. She agreed, and their team was sent to the ruins at number seven. When they arrived there, the girl said that those ruins were once an outpost of people from the fifth dimension, but they were destroyed because they underestimated the strength of the monsters. And Lun Yu asked her why she didn't want to go on the mission with Lodzin, 
because he was stronger and she would have completed the task faster with him. She said that she did not like people like Lodzin because he always puts himself above other people, and she thanked him for saving her from that unpleasant situation. Leung said that he had no other choice but to save her anyway. He said that the other students did not want to be on the team with him, and at that moment someone appeared behind them. They immediately sensed their presence and turned around and prepared for battle. The girl Leun Yuzi said that these are lower-level monsters, but they still need to be careful because they might have a strong leader. At the very moment when he said that he did not know where the leader of that group of monsters could be, he appeared behind their backs. In an instant, that monster struck a devastating blow. It was very fast, and Leun Yu flew into the wall like a bullet. The girl was very much surprised. She said that judging by the destructive power of that monster, he was the leader. In a moment, the monster struck again. It was very fast, and the ground immediately cracked into pieces. The girl suddenly jumped up and said that the monster probably did not know how to fight in the air, so she would quickly deal with him. She began to activate her power and prepared for retaliatory attacks. She already had a plan in mind. But suddenly, that monster jumped up very quickly and approached her. He was at close range and could make attacks. He opened that huge metal mouth and wanted to tear that girl apart with one blow. At that moment, she was driven into a stupor and could not do anything because she was overcome with fear. But at the crucial moment, Liun Yu appeared in front of her, and he said that the girl was one of the strongest students in that school. That monster bit his hand, and it hurt a lot, but he didn't show it. Liun Yu said to her, how could a mid-level monster scare her? He looked at the monster defiantly and asked him, whom has this monster decided to devour? In an instant, he pulled his hand out of his mouth and jumped up and down, saying that the school uniform was quite expensive and the monster had ruined it. Leung Yu prepared to strike a very strong blow. He said that that monster had a debt to him and he was going to take it. A second later, he made a very powerful kick and the monster flew into the ground like a bullet and crashed with a very loud bang. At that moment, both his and the girl's eyes were very red. Did he say that she called him a medium-level monster? When he looked at her, he noticed that she was somehow upset. He played along and started shouting that his arm was really hurting after that monster bite, but in fact, it was not hurting him. The girl immediately understood everything and told him not to pretend, because she knew he was not injured. Suddenly, she said directly that she knew everything, that he had very high defense skills. Liun Yu was very surprised that she had stated this fact so bluntly. He decided to ask her how she knew about his abilities. She began to say that not long ago, he had defeated a student with dark flow energy, and they were friends. She also said that she had seen their fight, and that anyone who had seen that fight could have thought that the girl had lost because she was weak. But she knows about the destructive power her friend possesses, so it turns out that he was able to withstand her destructive attacks only because he has incredible defense techniques. But she said she understood why he didn't want to tell people about his power, because the world around him is not very friendly. But he doesn't really show that power because he doesn't know anything about it. Then he decided to say that he actually trains very hard, and in the future he plans to raise his skills to her level. Then they turned their attention to the other monsters, and they needed to get back to the task at hand. Leo Nui suggests that they relax and enjoy the process of beating the monsters a little. After the monsters saw his evil gaze, all they wanted to do was return to their mommy. The place where they were performing that task was somehow special. All those destroyed buildings evoked a special atmosphere. Meanwhile, Leong Yu fought the monster, and he gave it a powerful sidekick. This monster screamed with a terrible sound, and it was in great pain. And because of this blow, it flew very far away and stopped moving. That collision even warmed him up a bit, he said, that it was the last monster. When they were checking to make sure that all the monsters had been destroyed, Liun Yu asked the girl who had turned to Liu Nojie if a mere awakened one could receive such dark stream energy as her friend. At first, she said that it was a secret. But since he had told her about himself, she would tell him about his friend. She began to say that it is not possible for a person to gain such strength in general because its main property is innate genetics. But there is another unconfirmed way. You need to destroy the monster kings of different levels, then you need to absorb their crystals, and then you can possibly get the dark energy of the flow. 
Since those kings are very powerful and there are always many monsters serving them, the rulers hide this information. He asked why they were hiding it. She replied that it was to save the lives of prominent awakened ones who might want to try to gain more power in this way. She noticed that he was thinking about this method and immediately began to tell him not to even try it, because he would definitely die. The teacher was always on the alert and watched how the task was going. Suddenly, he was very surprised to see that the first team had appeared in the portal, and he couldn't understand how they managed to be the first. When they were leaving, Liu Nojie told him not to go to that place under any circumstances. Liu Nyu was a little nervous and said that she was like a mommy because he told her he would not go there. The teacher was surprised to say that he did not expect them to come back first, and Liu Nyu was angry with the teacher. He started to ask how the level seven monsters were because he thought they were fun, but at that moment, Liu Nui's shoe was flying towards his face. The teacher was shocked and did not understand what was happening. Liu Nui was outraged that the teacher hadn't warned them that there would be mid-level monsters and that he had almost killed Liu Nodi's friend. He began to step aside and said that he was very surprised at what the teachers of that academy were thinking. The teacher noticed the pride of Lun Yu, and he said that there were probably not enough mid-level monsters for him. Suddenly, another team appeared from the portal. One of them was very happy to be in the team with Luo Jin. They easily passed the task. He said that they were probably the first to arrive. They were shocked to see that there was already a team standing there. Liu Nyu decided to joke and said that because Wu Ha was disturbing Lodzitz, he came later than they did. He also told Wuj to choose his assistants more carefully because they simply did not suit him. And then he turned around and left. Suddenly, Lodzin approached the girl, Liu Node and asked how she had done it so quickly, because he could not believe that it was due to the power of Liunyu. At that moment, other students began to walk by, and they were also surprised to see who had already finished the assignment. The girl was confused again, wondering why he was asking her because she knew he didn't like her. She looked at Loinius, and he gestured that it was Lotz who was a little crazy, and she thought it was definitely his style to say that he did not believe in the strength of another person. After that, she figured out how to answer him. She said that she had identified the attributes of the monsters and quickly defeated them. He asked her if it really helped her that she had identified their peculiarities. Other students said that Lun Yu was lucky to have such a strong partner because he did nothing and was able to pass the internship just like that. But that student suspected something. He said that he didn't believe in luck, that it was all just a lie. Six months passed, and it was the same location again, where there were solid ruins. Leung Yu finished the battle. He said that since he had destroyed all the monsters of the 17th level, he could say with certainty that he did not need help. He was only consoled by the fact that the training was coming to an end and the next test would be much more interesting. He could no longer wait for the ranking fights to begin in Zhengzhou. On that day, the students were outside and many said that those six months had passed very quickly, and Lunui thought that since then he had not been able to use the shadow system. He was simultaneously angry that it couldn't update all the time and decided that he didn't need it. He began to resent why the academy was so fond of gathering students early in the morning, because he had trained to the last yesterday and was now very exhausted. The director said that he would not detain them for long, and said that in a few weeks there would be an event that would attract thousands of people's eyes. They all listened attentively, and the director said that in a week's time the castle of the Heavenly Cloud would be stopped in the Lomu River area. So teams of five or seven students from each city will have the opportunity to go to the land and fight the monsters that live near that river. Points will be awarded for the monsters destroyed, and the number of those points will determine the student's discount at the academy and then the overall rating will be formed. He also said that when the time comes, they will be followed by small flying cameras, which will accompany the students for 24 hours. Therefore, any person from any city on Earth will be able to see their every action. So these are not toys. The director also told them to remember to bring their armor because it would increase their chances of survival. From that moment on, they could start assembling a group for that task. He wished them all good luck. Lun Yu thought that luckily he already had the best soldier's armor, so he decided to go and look for his friend.
Suddenly, she was in front of him and immediately started apologizing to him because she was already on another team. She appeared before him so quickly that he was frightened. She said that certain team lists had been formed long ago, and she was included in such a team because they thought that if they mixed newcomers and strong ones, it could have a bad impact on the school's rating. He patted her head and said that of course he understood that she could not refuse them. She immediately began to ask him what he would do now, and Liu Nyu went on to tell her not to worry, because he would think of something. He thought that even though he said that, he really had no idea who he could team up with. But suddenly a guy with green hair approached him and called Liu Nyu a lost soul. He asked him if he wanted to join his team. Lunui thought that Zhang Daxiong was that rich student, and he realized that they hadn't even spoken to each other during the whole period. So why did he decide to invite him to the team? Then Liu Nui decided that he didn't care and would go with him. John was immediately excited and said he wanted to show him their team. There were two very strange guys there. Their names were Li Nan and Lu Qiang. They were the sons of the richest people in the city. Li Yunyu was shocked to see what kind of team they had assembled. He thought that the rich suckers had decided to go hunting. Then Zhang said that he was officially announcing the creation of the group. He said that he would go to the teacher and register their group. Then one of the suckers spoke up. He said that they could not go to the registration because there were only four of them and they needed another participant as a bomb. Lyunj did not like it. He thought that he could run away from them as soon as possible. The next day, Liunyi was handed his advance of 7, 7,500 yuan. He was disappointed because that money would not even buy a tent, let alone armor. At that moment, another guy came over and immediately said that he was doing just fine and Liung Yu thought that he envied him very much. Suddenly, Zhang appeared there. He already had a lot of things bought. He asked Lo Nui if he was going to buy something for himself, but he immediately realized that he simply did not have the money. Zhang began to ask him what he would really do without transportation and a tent, as well as other very important things. Liung Yu said that he did not need all this. He could run and graze on the ground. In a moment, Zhang burst into tears and said that he had no idea that Li Yunhui was so poor. He said that the big Jun's group would not give him lunch. Zhang put the credit card on the table and said that the salesman had wrapped up whatever Lu Nui wanted. When Li Yunyu was picking out his things, Zhang decided to pay for the things he took, and the amount was 1,400,000,000 yuan. After that, he said he would take those two cars and have them prepared in the best way possible and he would also need a combat vehicle that he would pick up later. Lunui was impressed. He thought it was very cool to be rich. He also said that he wanted to take the most expensive tent. He paid 12 million for the cars and another 6 million yuan for the tent. Did Liunyu feel like a real loser? The next day, the events moved to the majestic building of the Association of the Awakened. Yi Hu asked his friend if he thought that Liu Nui would take part in that task. He also said that his girlfriend was in their team that time and that they could have taken him to the team. Lodzen replied that he didn't know anything and didn't want to think about it. As the car was approaching, Yi Hu said that Liu Nui was annoying him a lot. Suddenly, a red car stopped very abruptly near him, and he was very frightened because it was unexpected. Yi Hu was very angry and asked, Who is this inept driver? But when he noticed that it was Liu Yu, he was very surprised, and he immediately asked him why he had come to the association. Liu Yu got out of the car and said that he had some business to attend to, and that the competition was about to start, and he wanted to take a couple of tasks to complete at the same time. Yi Hu mocked him and asked him if he had found a team. Suddenly they heard a very loud sound, and immediately, Baby Mummy, we are here. They were even more surprised. It was Zhang and his friends, and he immediately said that it had taken Lu Nui a long time to get there. Maybe he needed to replace the car with a better one. Yi Hu looked at them with disgust and said that this was not a team, but a bunch of rich assholes. And how were they going to destroy the monsters? Or maybe they were going to throw money at all the monsters, and they were missing one person in the team. Lu Nui himself realized that they were right and asked Zhang what they would do but he said that he had already decided. He said she would arrive at the meeting point very soon. Was Leung Yu very interested in looking in different directions for that fifth team member?
Lunya was shocked to see a motorcycle rushing past them at breakneck speed. Those two were a bit confused. They asked if this was their fifth participant. But in an instant, he realized who she was and just fell into a stupor. Because she was a student from Lin Shuang High School, she looked very interesting and attractive. Liu Nyu also did not realize who she was. Zhang started waving to her and saying that he was greeting Shuang's sister. Suddenly, the guy with the glasses started saying what his sister had forgotten there. Liu Nyu said that it was simply impossible. He would never have believed that they were brother and sister. He was furious at such a harsh accusation that he was not beautiful. Luo Zun immediately began to tell her that she was from the wrong city and that she would be breaking the rules if she joined them and thus would worsen her rating. She immediately calmed him down and told him that she had already been accepted to Jafeng Academy. Ihu did not know who she was and decided to ask his friend if she was cool. He said that her previous academy had a much higher ranking than theirs and that she had a second level awakening and a black crystal of flow energy. He had also heard that she had studied with a stream master for several years and had developed incredible abilities and fighting skills, and that she was a master on par with them. Zhang said that he didn't think she would come, but since she did, it's great. She fits their team's criteria. She started pulling her brother's cheeks and telling him that she had come to help him because his parents would be shocked if they knew he was last in the ranking. Now that they are ready, they decided to go for registration. But the girl noticed Liu Nyu and thought he was different from the rest of them. A week passed and the city of Tianyang successfully landed. Everyone was waiting for the competition to begin. The gates of the gateway will open soon and everyone hopes that the students will be able to show a decent result this year. In an instant, the gates opened and dozens of different cars rushed out of the city. All the people who were in the virtual venue gathered around the big screens and watched the broadcast with great interest. At the hospital, Liu Nyu's father asked his daughter to help him sit more comfortably so that he could see better. He thought that his son should do his best and make his own future. It was Lodz's team, and his friend calmed him down and told him not to worry, because there was no faster car than theirs, and all the monsters would be theirs. He said that he remembers that there was a place on the map where it was marked as safe, and he suggested that they stop there and rest and put on armor to prepare for the battle. That girl was always thinking about Liun Yu. She thought that she hadn't seen him for a long time and she didn't know if he had found a team. She was very worried about him. At that moment, there was a loud sound. It was a car, but the sound was very unclear. They all started looking around and wondering who it could be. They said that we should be careful because it could be a monster. In the blink of an eye, a car appeared in the rearview mirror approaching very quickly. Yi Hu was shocked because he had been working on improving their car himself, so he was sure there was no faster car in town than his. A few moments passed, and that car was already on the tail of the gray car. Yi Hu was even more shocked. He didn't understand how this was possible, because there were no such specialists in that flying city to make such a fast car. In an instant, the car that was chasing the blue car hit a small jump. In a second, that car was in the air, and the crew of the gray car could not believe their eyes at what was happening. Yi Chao even climbed outside to make sure it was exactly what he thought it was. When he looked closer, he was even more surprised. It was the team of Leung and Chan, and they had this incredible girl driving. They were just having fun. Some time passed, and they decided to stop to discuss the next steps. Liun Yu was assigned to the map, and he said that they had reached the beginning of the river in a very short time, but they hadn't decided what they were going to do next. The girl said that she didn't care where she was going because the size of the local monsters was not important to her. Her brother asked them to choose a place that would be relatively calm. Jang said that they have a great choice because they have a girl master and very fast transportation, so they can go anywhere. Hearing this, Liun Yu immediately found the place on the map that he liked best. But suddenly, the toothy man in the back began to argue, saying that the demons of Aya were living in that city. Immediately after that, a guy with glasses got on the phone and said that those demons are the most dangerous in the area. Leonui began to say that they were really that strong. Lin's girlfriend said that if you meet such a monster alone, it will not be strong at all. But the problem is that they always live together, and they are very smart and they feel hatred for people. They wait for the right moment and always attack in a group and with a very powerful attack. 
All those whom they found in such a situation were killed. After these words, he also felt a little uneasy at the thought of those monsters. Zhang began to say that this is exactly why no one wants to go to that horrible place. But they will go there, and all the points will be theirs, and no one will be able to take them away from them. Those two losers in the back started yelling at him and asking him if he was tired of living because they would definitely die there. Liun Yu began to calm them down and asked if his sister would support them in this serious matter. It was as if she didn't care what they decided, she would do it. In a moment, they decided that it was three against two, so everything was decided and they were going to go, but the two losers started shouting that they would not go and that they should be dropped off. But they convinced him that he would die even faster on his own. Jang said that there is a place where demons live in front of the car, and when they get out, everyone needs to use their armor and be on full alert. He had the armor of an executioner and a weapon of accelerated pressure. The two losers were impressed by his armor because theirs was simpler. One of them asked Jan why he was so afraid of death. The sister said that she was also ready for the battle. She was wearing simple warrior's clothes, and Jan was curious about the armor that Lunui had. In a moment he was ready, and Jan was very surprised to see him. He asked how much did Lunai manage to get such armor for. At first, Leonui was angry because he thought that Jang wanted to humiliate him. But Jang continued to say that this was the uniform of the Temple of War, and that no amount of money could buy such armor. He came up and said that he wanted to take a closer look at it. He was impressed with its quality. Lunai was a little embarrassed, thinking that the armor was really that good. Could his father have gotten such things? At that moment, some creatures were moving nearby. Sister Shin immediately sensed that they were approaching them. She immediately informed her comrades that the moment of the first night had arrived. They all needed to find shelter to come up with a plan and assess the situation. When they took up their positions, they had radio transmitters, and Sister Shin asked Zhang to report on the situation. Thanks to his special weapon, he could see his enemies better. He said that he could see the target and that there were two demons, Aya, probably looking around the area. Sister Shin told him to make sure there were no other monsters nearby. In a second, he looked around and there was no one else there except those two. After that, Sister Shin told Zhang and Lunyun to prepare for the attack. Suddenly, the monster noticed something on the ground and he was immediately surprised. When he picked up that thing, which was a candy sucker, Sister Shin, the monster immediately suspected that something was wrong. But in the next moment, Jang hit him right in the head with a very powerful shot that made his head just disappear. And at the same time, Leonui was already very close to another monster. With a tremendously fast and accurate strike, he quickly neutralized the second monster with lightning speed. At that moment, his eyes were filled with red color again, and he said that the targets had been successfully neutralized. Meanwhile, at the headquarters, they were discussing the situation that the city of the Black Emperor was quite strong this year, as they were already in fourth place, and only half a day had passed, and the city of White Snow had changed dramatically from last year, as they were already in 30th place. But even more impressive was the city of the Happy Wind, because last year they were in the 140th place, and now they are in the 70th place. They say that a new awakened one named Lods appeared in that year. There was a teacher from that city there, and he immediately said that Lods would not change anything radically there because he did not believe in it. He looked at Leung Yu and wondered how he managed to score so many points. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, the guy with the eyeglasses was a decoy. He was running away fast, and a whole army of monsters was chasing him. He shouted that it was time for Lunius to join the fight, for it was his turn, and in a moment he jumped out of the trees. He told the kid not to worry because he was already there. With a very powerful kick, he killed one monster, and the whole army stopped in amazement. That guy kept running away and said that he had accomplished the mission and lured out all the demons of I. Liunui said he had done a good job and could run away from there. Liunyu stood alone against an entire army, and he himself told them to attack all at once. And that's exactly what those monsters did. And in a moment, they all attacked him rapidly and wanted to destroy him. But Liunyu was skillfully dodging and striking back. He acted like a solid fighting machine. His movements were very precise and confident. There was not a drop of fear in his eyes, nor a doubt that he would not win. 
He just kept chopping them into pieces at a frantic speed and throwing them in different directions. After a very fast-paced battle, he stopped for a moment to catch his breath. But at that moment, two monsters appeared out of nowhere and managed to sneak up to launch a surprise attack. At the very last moment, Liun Yu noticed them, and there was just one second left for him to react. But as soon as he turned around, two simultaneous attacks were launched at those two monsters, which neutralized them. It was Zhang Yi Liu Shan, she reminded Lun Yum that he could rely on them completely, for they are there to cover his backside. The last monster started to run away, and Liu Shan told him to quickly neutralize it so that it wouldn't tell others what happened there. But suddenly, another boy came up to him and asked that Liu Yu give that monster to him. He launched a special attack called the Death Eater Flywheel. It was actually a very powerful technique because it simply cut it into two pieces. It was one of the losers. He was very happy that he was able to destroy at least one monster. And his sister said that they were all good and did a great job. She also said that they had already destroyed more than 30 monsters and that they had probably already earned some points. Jang started to say that he had to strike while the iron was hot, so he asked Luan to bring some more monsters. But he started shouting that he wouldn't do that because he didn't want to be bait, because he almost died last time. Then Zhang came up with a solution that Liu Nui should be the decoy, and Shu Luan should fight in the first line. His plan worked, and he immediately agreed to be a decoy again. After that, Zhang went to his sister and asked her why she decided to sit down. She asked him if Liu Nui had awakened less than a year ago. Zhang replied that it was correct that they were saying that he had recently awakened. She said that this was very unusual because he had very great power. Zhang smiled and said that he had long realized that he was an unusual guy. That is why he decided to invite him to join their team. In an instant, they all heard a very large noise coming toward them, and in a moment, the one who was the bait appeared. He ran away with all his might and also shouted to his comrades to get ready to run away. They were shocked, that second loser said, that it was the head of the demons of Awa. They were all forced to quickly seek shelter and retreat. After some time passed, they managed to break away from those monsters and make a fire. Jang started counting the points they had earned and said that they had a big catch that day. He was amazed because Lunyum was able to destroy 230 monsters and brought their team 43% of the revenue. Sister Shin also destroyed 92 monsters and brought in 35 points of income, and the cover guys also destroyed several more monsters. Lung Yum said that Sister Shin was covering him all the time, because if she had fought alone, she would have killed many more monsters, and if it were not for her, he would not have been able to attack so easily. She realized that with these words, he wanted to give her all the credit. She realized that he was hiding on purpose. Suddenly, Zhang noticed that the one who was the bait was very disappointed. He said that he had tried his best all day and only got five points, so he was disappointed. His fellow loser also decided to cheer him up and said that he also got only five points. Then Sister Shin said that there was no need to cry because she already knew all the points she had. Lun Yum was shocked, he thought to himself. Can those points really be given away? He immediately said that he would also give him 15% of the points. Zhang was surprised because he had seen how hard Lun Yu had earned them. But he smiled and said that it was okay because they were a team and had to cooperate. Some of them asked why Lunui was so kind, but Sister Shan said that they would continue talking tomorrow and dividing the scores as well, and now they needed to rest. But the most expensive tent was like a full-fledged house. Leung Yu was holding two large crystals in his hands. They were so beautiful and shone very strongly. Inside that tent was like a five-star hotel, and he kept looking at those crystals. But he remembered what Sister Shin had said, that the crystals taken from the monsters had a limited effect. They only lasted 12 hours, so they had to be used quickly. He thought that he wanted to do those things in a more relaxed environment, but he probably had no choice and had to do it there. He opened the system panel and thought that it would be exciting to choose an improvement point for the first time. He was confused because there were so many points he didn't know which one to improve. He recalled his teacher's words that he had recommended that he first improve the saint's point, which is located in the head, and that with the power of thought, one can then develop it even better. When he analyzed everything, he decided to listen to the teacher. In an instant, he squeezed the crystal very hard, and it immediately cracked into small pieces. An energy appeared in Liu Yu's hands. It was quite powerful, and he did not know exactly how to act, 
because he had never done this before. When he opened his hands, that energy took the form of a ball. It looked very beautiful and powerful. He brought his hands to his head, and that energy in the form of a ball joined his head and gradually began to dissolve in his body. After he had completed those operations with all the crystals, he felt a little sick. When he looked at his own data, he was disappointed because five crystals only lit his point by 70%. He thought, why can't a point be lit by one or two crystals? Suddenly, his system notified him that his shadow had been completely updated. He was happy. He immediately told me to get the shadow system up and running, and his shadow appeared in front of him, as if renewed and improved. He was a little surprised that she also had armor, but it was beautiful. The message appeared again, saying that the shadow had the same power as the master, and that because the master had used the holy point, the shadow's intelligence had grown, and it was now possible to control the shadow with thought. It was something incredible. He was delighted and very eager to try out new abilities. He decided to try it and looked very carefully into the eyes of his shadow. He heard himself mentally saying that he wanted to move into its body. At one point, his body simply lost control and began to fall. After a moment, his eyes began to open in the shadows, and he saw a body lying before him and they were unconscious. He felt that he was really in the body of a shadow. It was a very cool feature, and not for nothing, that he waited there for a long time. He decided to come out of the body of the shadow because sleeping at night is a waste of life. Finally, it's time for the midnight entertainment that he can now do. He quietly left that huge tent because he was worried that Zhang would not notice him. A few hours passed, and the sun began to rise. Lunyum finished absorbing the crystals he had gotten during the night. He was a little exhausted from fighting monsters and absorbing the power of the crystals, but his nighttime hunt paid off, for he was able to discover the first holy spot. He was holding a thing in his hands and wondering what it was, because the demons he had met in the night were guarding the thing. Suddenly someone came in abruptly and he dropped the thing. They were calling him because it was time to go. The two fearful friends were discussing how many points they were able to light with the crystals. The one with the glasses said that he had only managed to light up 80% of the points on his hands. Another said that he was a little worse off because his five crystals only lit up 75% of the points on his foot. They asked Lunium how many dots he lit yesterday. They thought for sure more than one with his data. But he said that he could only light the point on his head up to 70%. At first, the two were just surprised because they thought the result would be completely different. But then they just started laughing and saying that their data was higher than his. But they did not laugh for long, for Sister Shin told them to sit down, for it was time for them to continue their hunt, to continue to destroy that herd of monsters. The four days passed very quickly. Everyone fought very hard and made great progress. The interaction in the group also improved. They began to understand each other without words, and soon they would be able to destroy high-level monsters. Li Yunyu continued to go hunting every night in the form of a shadow. He liked it very much. During that time, he was able to ignite four points and his strength doubled. But all the time, his actions were being watched very closely. A strange gentleman who sat in the shadows and looked very powerful and mysterious. He summoned the director of the academy where Li Yunyu studied. The man said that it just so happened that a dark horse was born that year in the city of the Lucky Wind. The mayor said it was true because his city's rating had already exceeded all expectations. A man tells the principal to tell him about a boy with red hair. His name is Lunyu, and he is a simple awakened one. Nothing special about him. But the band he is in scored quite a lot of points. Even more than the band with the student Lodzin, on whom they had high hopes. The man said that those two students were quite good, but it was a pity that he did not like them, and especially that he would not be able to use them in the future. So they were becoming dangerous to him. At first, the director did not understand what the man wanted to tell him. The man continued to say that it was normal for students to die in such competitions. And after that, the principal said he understood. Meanwhile, the team was deciding whether they should attack the next enemies. They were assessing the enemy's strength, and Liun Yu said that in that group of monsters, there were several shamans with magic and an elder who could tame animals. Zhang said that Lu Nui should not worry because he had checked everything and the elder was not there. Liun Yu thought about it, and they said that they got more points for shamans than for those little monsters. 
Sister Shan said she supported Jiang's proposal to attack the shamans. She said that they had all made progress in that time, and it was time for them all to face a stronger monster, and most importantly, that she needed the black crystals. Leonui began to think that all the time she had been helping them and giving them all the crystals. Therefore, those who were baited were allowed to set out on the road to bring the monsters to them. A little time passed, and Lunui himself began to ask Zhang if those who had gone as bait were all right since they had been gone for a long time. Zhang said that he would not worry about Angie, because he had already become strong enough. He had already been able to light a point in his hand, and his skills were not even worse than Zhang's. In the meantime, he met the first monster, and it was quite big, and definitely not of a lower level. But the guy's skills have improved quite a bit. And most importantly, he's become bolder. So in a flash, he struck with his sword. He continued to strike and destroy the monsters. And for this purpose, he spun around in a circle and waved his swords. When he stopped, he noticed that he had cut off the arm of a big monster. He said that he hadn't been playing around with nonsense in recent days, and it had done him good. He was already running to his friends and shouting at them to get ready for a fight, but he didn't notice that there was another guy sitting on the road. They heard his cry and prepared to meet the monsters he brought to them. But suddenly one monster was destroyed by someone very quickly and it was someone else. He immediately stopped and said that this was the team everyone was talking about. Two guys started approaching them. They were behaving very boldly. They jumped over Lun Yu and said they were sorry, but the points would be theirs that time. Sister Shan and Liun Yu were very surprised at this insolence, but they did not know what to do. Then the two of them went up to the guy with the glasses and told him that they were grateful for his efforts, but they would take away the points. He was just in a stupor. He didn't even know what to say to them in such a situation. The monsters who were chasing the bait were a little surprised to see two enemies running out to meet them, not running away, but attacking them. In one second, all the limbs of that monster were cut off and scattered in different directions. And they didn't stop there. They continued to do the same to other monsters. Liunyu was very surprised because the two of them had killed the shamans of that tribe in an instant, and he asked where they came from. Shan's sister was very angry. She said that it was a team from another district, and they had come to take away their points. They must have gotten such great results that the others decided to interfere with them in this way. One of those naughty men said that he did not expect them to be so understanding, and he thanked them for bringing them monsters. Jan was disappointed and said that they could eat from that place. His friend asked him if they should just leave. Jan said that the points had already been stolen, and there was no point in fighting with them. Those two continued to humiliate Liun Yu's team, saying that they had stolen their crystals and that they didn't care about them because they were just weak and cowards. Jang stopped and the two fools continued to tell them to come back and fight them like normal men. And at that very moment, one of them was already very close and was preparing to stab Yan in the back. Jang felt his approach and began to change his body position very rapidly. In an instant, he met him in flight and kicked him right in the neck. That blow was enough to make the impudent man cool down for a moment. His friend was shocked by what happened. Jang shouted that those two bastards had already taken their points, so why hadn't they gotten rid of them yet? He looked at the boy even more closely and advised him not to annoy him. Suddenly, far in front of us in the forest, a strange thing rose into the sky. It was like a meteorite. Sister Shan immediately became very wary, and Lonui waited for someone to tell him what it was. Jang was also very surprised to see this. He said it was a flare. In a moment, he shouted very loudly and confusedly to them all to run away. Leonui and his sister did not understand his strange reaction. Why did they have to run away? But a moment later, the person he was shouting at them to run away from appeared behind Zar. He turned sharply and noticed that the monster was aiming at the guy he had neutralized earlier. That guy just couldn't move. Fear completely gripped his body and he froze. Just in an instant, something very terrible happened. That monster just bit off part of the guy's clothes. He was trembling with fear, and there was nothing he could do. Liun Yu asked his sister, Shan, what kind of monster was so formidable and terrible. In an instant, the monster struck a lightning blow with a huge paw at the guy in front of him. His friend got up very suddenly and ran to help his friend. Jang stood still so as not to attract the attention of that monster, and that guy just flashed by him in a moment. 
Jang told him to go back and stay away from that monster, but he was blinded by the feeling of revenge and did not hear him. Before he could even get close, a giant paw was flying at him. That monster was just incredibly strong. It caused a very strong explosion. Jang thought that this was not a joke or a game at all, but that in that situation, they could really die. A second later, that monster struck at Zhang, but he managed to dodge it, and he shouted again for his friends to run away because the demon dog. They started running away, and the one with glasses asked what to do with those two guys. Sustra replied that they didn't care about them because they were already beyond saving. Jang prepared his pistols and thought that he was barely able to dodge, but still the monster caught him a little on the armor. They were running as fast as they could, and John was shooting at that demon to hold him off, and they were running to the car. Suddenly, another demon dog appeared from behind the bushes, and another monster was sitting on its back. Liu Nui managed to dodge the attack of the other demon and said that there were already two of them. Jang said that that little monster was the demon elder away. He was emphasizing that they shouldn't stop and run to the car. As they were running away, Lunui asked where so many demon dogs could suddenly come from. The guy with the glasses said, they must have been trapped by the elder, Jang said. That that signal fire was a signal that they had entered the encirclement zone. Sister Shan said that the elder was very, very nasty because he made them think he was gone, but he had prepared an ambush near his own tribe and was waiting for them to fall into a trap so that he could catch them all at once. In a moment they stopped, for Lun Yu said that there were many of those dog demons in front of them. Several more giant monsters blocked their way to the car. As a result, they all gathered in a bunch and were completely surrounded. They asked each other what to do now. Lunui was very embarrassed by this not-so-dangerous situation. The chief of the demons began to say that they had killed many of his fellow men and that he would kill them all that day to take revenge on them. Lunyu said that it was hard for him to believe that such a monster could talk. It was the first time he had ever seen one. The elder was even more angry when he heard such insulting words. One of Leung Yu's friends said that he was the elder of the monsters that he was the smartest of them all, but he still looked strange. In a moment, that elder rushed to the attack and shouted, How dare they look down on him! Zhang kept shooting at those huge demon dogs, shouting for them to die as soon as possible, but they were still coming towards them. But at one point, the demon leader gave the dogs an order to attack and tear them to pieces at the same time. With great speed and fury, those monsters rushed into battle. Leonui began to open the system panel and asked if Sister Shuang could break through the encirclement by herself. He told her to break through the cordon and come for them by car, and they would wait for her and try to hold out. She asked him if he was sure about this plan. Leonui smiled and said that he was not really sure about anything. He stuck his hand into the system panel because he had a little plan. In an instant, he began to take out the sword that he had in that virtual space and he promptly rushed to the attack and said that since he was not sure of anything, she had better come back as soon as possible. He started chopping down those monsters very quickly and skillfully, and at the same time, she was jumping over them all to get to the car. Lun Yu was calm because he realized that any more panic would only harm him. Simple single demons did not make him strain at all. 750. The girl, Shan, tried to break through the encirclement as quickly as possible and mentally begged that her friends would be able to hold out. When she almost escaped from that environment, she was almost caught by that demon dog. But her brother appeared before her and he took the attack upon himself. He was injured and she was amazed that her brother was capable of such a heroic act. He gathered his strength and told her not to look back because if she didn't catch the car, they would all die there. He said to those dogs of demons that he was their enemy and let them attack him. 756. He attacked the monster with great force to give his sister a chance to escape. After that, he did not stop. He managed to get some improvised weapon from the system and struck again at that monster. Meanwhile, the other monsters continued to attack rapidly. This time, another guy was in their crosshairs and he also became much bolder than he had been before. He was able to develop his fighting skills well and was also able to destroy the two monsters that attacked him with ease. But he still lacked combat experience because he could not foresee that there was another monster behind him, which was already very close. But in an instant, that monster was shot and neutralized. It was Zhang. He said that they needed to be very careful to hold out until his sister came. Lunui continued to destroy a lot of monsters very quickly. 
but he noticed that there are more and more monsters every time you go, and if this continues, they won't be able to hold out. In an instant, he turned around because he heard a very loud cry for help. On the other side, his friends were clutched by a demon dog holding the guy with glasses in its huge paws. Then the demon dog threw him aside with great force. The friends were seriously frightened because they were really on the verge of death. Leng Yu was very worried. He realized that things were very bad and he needed to think of something quickly. He realized that the main danger now was those demon dogs, but they were controlled by the leader of the monsters. He was separated by dozens of ordinary monsters, but he must get to the main one and destroy it. He decided that instead of fighting with all of them, he would try to jump over them all so that he could get to the most important one. In a few moments, he succeeded and was flying with a powerful blow at the leader. At the last moment, he was able to dodge that devastating blow. In an instant, those demon dogs stopped and stopped attacking Lunui's friends, part of the plan he had conceived. The monster began to call those dogs to come to his defense. Jang was both surprised and glad that the creatures had stopped attacking her. With lightning speed, those dogs began to approach Lunui, and he changed his mind to notice their approach. As soon as they approached, one of them dealt a devastating blow to Lunius. He repelled that shot but was thrown far back. In a moment, all of the dogs quickly approached and began to attack at the same time, and Lu Nui realized that if it was three on one, he would have to use his full strength. He fought back heroically, but the tension was growing with each passing second. At the very climax, he was able to withstand many simultaneous blows. It was just incredible. Chang was amazed. He couldn't believe that Lu Nui was able to withstand the simultaneous attacks of the demon dogs. The guy with the big teeth was also in a stupor, because what he saw was like a miracle for them. They wondered if Liun Yu had entered a state of flow, and therefore his power had increased. Meanwhile, Liun Yu had forgotten that there were other people there who were watching his strength, and you could tell by his face that he was enjoying the fight. Zhang turned to his friend and said that the friend meant that the state they were now seeing in Liun Yu was called a trance just like the ancient legend of the sacred warrior says. Leung Yu then changed completely and looked very formidable. And Zhang said, I wonder what other secrets he's hiding from them. The chief of the monsters was simply shocked, and he could not understand what had happened to that man. For he was fighting alone against three demon dogs. Leung Yu felt what normal opponents were like and was able to start feeling his own strength to the maximum. And in a moment, the leader of the monsters, who had not yet recovered from the shock of the human soldier, heard his soldiers screaming in pain and making terrible sounds from his backside. It was Sister Shan who arrived. She said they were a bunch of little bastards and let them feel what real pain is. In an instant, the machine guns that were installed on that vehicle started working at full capacity. The Vonstrus did not know where to run to hide from those destructive machine guns. Those guys were just very happy when they noticed that Sister Shun had arrived. She was also happy that when she arrived, she saw them alive. She said, did those guys order a car? Jang started shouting at Leo Nui to get in the car. At that moment, Lunyu was covered with energy as if he was dancing among those dogs. He was in such a strange state that lightning began to appear near him. At that moment, people in the headquarters apartment where all the broadcasts took place and those who followed the competition were alerted because someone was seen who was able to enter the trance of a holy warrior. They ordered to stop the video broadcast and to pass the information to the saint as soon as possible. A little time passed and Liung Yu seemed to wake up. He said that they had miraculously fought back. That toothy guy said he finally woke up and he doesn't even know what condition he was in. Leon Yu said that he did not know what happened, but he felt his whole body filled with strength. He continued that he could not suppress the desire to fight. Suddenly, Zhang caught him by the shoulder and said that they would not discuss this for now. He opened the plate and began to look through it. He said that although their lives were hanging in the balance, they had made a very good living. They had 30 simple crystals and two black ones. We can say that Leon Yu saved their lives, so he offered to give their entire reward to him as a sign of gratitude. He was very surprised by this statement. He did not understand how this could be done. But those guys, former losers, said that they would gladly give him all their crystals because he saved their lives. Leunui rose slowly, but he got up. Zhang and Sister Shun were surprised, and he said that he did not agree to such conditions. 
Liun Yu continued to say that they all worked equally hard, so they would share the spoils together because, in fact, he had not done anything special, but simply did what he always did. He was just trying his best to save his friends. Then they agreed with him because they were all tired of fighting for their lives, but first they needed to know a place where they could rest. Later, they managed to find a place to stay, and Leonui headed for the shower, he said. He said he felt completely different now. Suddenly, a message from the system appeared there, saying that it was greeting the owner. She presents him with a reward for his achievements, and he immediately wonders what kind of reward it could be. The system said that it was giving the host a gift box of Veda. He picked up that box and looked at it carefully, and the system said that from that box, within the lottery, you can get a variety of weapons and combat skills. He abruptly put down the drink he was drinking and said that it was time to open the box. He took it in one hand and said that he was very interested in what he could take out of that box. The box began to make strange noises and started to shake a little. And suddenly it just broke into several pieces, and there was nothing in the middle. Lunyu was shocked. He had not expected to see anything. He started to get very angry. He was saying, what the hell, because he couldn't get air. Suddenly, the system started congratulating him again, saying that he had taken out a very cool thing, and he was indignantly saying to it what it was congratulating him on, because he hadn't received anything. But when she told him that he had received a Class A combat skill, he was very surprised. She said that the skill was called leg spinning, and asked if she could expend her inner strength to learn it. Lunui immediately gave her permission to do so. The system announced that the combat skill was being learned and a blue energy platform appeared around it. He was very pleased because in this case he was really lucky. But all the blue energy began to rise from the ground and gradually entered his body, and the system said that the mastering was successful. He said he couldn't wait to finally try out that new skill. A little time passed, and it was deep night in that city. The lone monster was following a standard reconnaissance route. In an instant, Lun Yu's shadow appeared behind the monster, and it was already swinging to strike again. With that very quick punch, that monster just spun around like a spinning top. But Liun Yu did not stop there. He continued to advance. In a second, he was able to make two more very precise and powerful blows. Finally, he struck again and told the monster to enjoy his new abilities. Meanwhile, someone approached him in the large tent where he was sleeping. Liun Yu was sleeping and the person who came to him had a photo of him and was comparing whether he looked like the person in the photo. He looked at that photo carefully and said he was sorry. He is very strong and interferes too much with other participants. He also said that he hoped that in his next life, he would remember a very important phrase, which says that the one who goes for it gathers all the cones. Meanwhile, Liun Yu in the spirit body was amazed by the new skill saying that it was so strong that opponents could not even repel it. In an instant, an alarm sounded in his head. It was a very loud sound. But the system said that the host's body was in danger, and it was asking him to come back. He immediately said that he wanted the system to return him to his body. It was the last moment, and the man had already begun to deliver a very powerful blow. Lunue opened his eyes at the very last moment, he saw that a very strong blow was already coming at him. It was a disaster. A second later, there was a very loud and powerful explosion, and the impact was simply devastating. But a moment later, out of that big pile of smoke came Lun Yu. He gently dropped to the ground and looked in great detail in the direction where his opponent was. That man was very strong. He had very strong arms. He said that Lun Yu had a very good reaction. Lun Yu started asking him to tell him who he was. The man said very boldly that this was the last thing he should be concerned about. He said that he could worry that he would die that night. Leong Yu realized that this was very important, so he quickly opened the portal to his warehouse and reached out. As soon as he grabbed his sword, he began to draw it, but the man was already near him and struck again with a very quick blow. Leong Yu miraculously managed to dodge that blow. He was really very confused, and confused he thought that the enemy was very fast, that he couldn't even take the weapon. After a moment, the enemy began to glow with a golden glow, and Lin Yu thought that the man might be using the energy of golden crystals. He couldn't understand why an archer of such a high rank had come after him. The opponent said that he had a very fast reaction and wondered if he could do it this time. In a split second, the enemy began to approach so fast that he lost his human form. He looked like a yellow stream of energy. 
Suddenly, Lun Yu saw him only when he was already in front of him, and his blow had already been struck. Immediately after that, he felt a fierce pain. That blow was very powerful. He usually dodged or blocked such a blow. Immediately afterward, the man gave a very strong kick, and Liu Yu flew up the mountain with great speed. The force of that jolt was so strong that it broke through the ceiling of the tent. It was very serious. He realized that without a weapon, he was no match for that guy. And he noticed that Liu Yu was still alive and said that he would put him out of his misery. And in an instant, it disappeared, and yellow energy remained after it. His speed was incredible. In an instant, he was already on top and ready to finish off Lu Nui. He said goodbye to him. At the last moment, Shun's sister appeared on the street and shouted to Liu Nui. He noticed her and hoped she could help him somehow. At the fateful moment when the enemy had already launched the last attack, Sister Shun threw a sword at Liu Nui. Just as the enemy's blow was about to reach its target, Lung Yu grabbed his sword and he had hope. With the weapon in hand, he felt much better and managed to make a lightning-fast retaliatory strike. Sister Shun only noticed a loud explosion and two nebulous blue and yellow entities just flew out of the smoke. The enemy was not hurt at all and was even a little impressed because he said that with the weapon, Lun Yu became completely different. He was finally able to feel safe and that he was at least somehow in control of the situation. He said he had had enough, and now he would respond to the attacks. Then the opponent accelerated and began to make very fast moves with his hands. There was another mega-fast hit, but Lanui was able to counter it. He was very tense because he realized that they were actually very different in strength. At one point, the enemy began to make several more attacks, but he was able to counteract them all. He did everything very deliberately. He specifically studied what strengths and skills Li Yun Yu had. When he realized Lun Yu's main strength, he even stopped attacking and began to defend himself. The enemy turned to Li Yun Yu. He said that although he is a perfect swordsman and has a multi-surface attack, but he lacks explosive power, and in a moment he simply caught his sword with his hand at the moment of impact. He again threw it very far away, even though there was a Liu Yu attack at that moment. While he continued to roll into the distance by inertia, the enemy said that such techniques did not work on him. A moment later, he approached again and said that everything was very interesting, but their game had already come to an end. He also decided to say that he was really sorry to kill him because he was really talented, but business is business and there is no room for personal attitudes. Leonui looked at him and hoped that something would happen to help him, but the enemy raised his hand and pointed it at Lunuya and his palm glowed with a very bright light, and a fire dragon began to form around it. When his attack technique was ready, he looked into Liun Yu's eyes and said that he was going to die. In an instant, that fire dragon launched an incredible swift attack. It was just a super strike. But Liun Yu was not afraid. In fact, he even laughed. The enemy noticed this and was a little confused. He did not understand why he was laughing at such a crucial moment for him. When he was about to die... The super-powerful critical attack was very close, and in the next two seconds, Lunui would be destroyed. But there was a dramatic change. He received a message that his sword had moved to the fourth level, and his technique had also moved to the next level. He began to spin the energy around him so that it could enter his body as soon as possible and strengthen him. The enemy was seriously surprised, thinking that this guy was going to deflect his fire dragon claws strike. Meanwhile, Lun Yu drew in all the new energy he had gained with his leveling up and launched an attack against the strongest technique he had ever seen in his life. He realized that such an attack could only be repelled by a similar attack that would not be matched in strength. So he made a little less energy flow, which was like lightning. His smaller but much stronger attack simply cut its way through the fire attack far in front. When the miracle dissipated, the enemy did not take any action but simply stood there. But suddenly he felt an overwhelming sense of loss. Because his hand was on the ground, Leonui's technique was much stronger. He shouted at him and said that he had only taken his hand that day, but next time he would take his life. In an instant, his power dissolved, and he fell to his knees and began to scream how much it hurt. He looked at him closely because he realized that he might pull a trick. The enemy began to panic and shout that he would kill Liun Yu and that he would not forgive him. He pointed his sword at the enemy and asked him if he really wanted to continue. He also said that if he didn't hurry up, he would just lose a lot of blood and die. He jumped up and said that he would definitely remind him. 
At that moment, he was breathing very hard, and it was clear that his sister Sean had found him. But suddenly he coughed sharply and threw his sword to the ground, and he almost didn't fall. She was very worried about him and scared. She managed to catch him and asked if he was okay. Liu Yu started to scare her very much again because he started coughing very sharply and violently. He told her not to worry because he was fine. There was a lot of blood on his arm, and he thanked her for saving him. He also said that it was a good thing that his opponent believed him, because if they had continued the fight, he would have lost. Zhang was thinking about the situation and said that Shanan and Jixiao were in the camp guard that night. Someone stunned them and did not kill them. Therefore, he figured that the main target was not their team, but only one Liu Yu. Sister Shan said that she thinks they are interfering with other teams that are high level, and so they sent an assassin to take away their main force, Shanan said. If so, why did they need only Lunui? Because his sister is also very strong. She said that their family was quite famous, and that people from the top would not dare to attack them like that. She also said that whoever wanted to attack them should first think about her holy mentor. Liun Yu listened to all this and was a little disappointed. He thought he had worked so hard and was considered a nobody without a family tree. He began to think that in this case he should take revenge. Zhang then said that they would do nothing for a few more days and wait until Liun Yu's wounds healed, and then they would see what they should do next. Liun Yu immediately denied him and said that he was fine and that they had made very good progress in the rankings and shouldn't stop. Zhang said that his life was more important than the results of the competition. It was very unusual for him to hear such words addressed to himself. Then he stood up and said, They should all go to rest, but he will stay on guard. He took the blood from the ground and ran his finger over it, thinking that they were not finished yet and that he would not get away with it. He said, so that the system starts scanning that blood. But the system detected some blood and said that the scan had started and we had to wait. In a moment, the system said that the blood information was found and recorded in the database. But suddenly, Zhang appeared out of nowhere. He asked Lun Yu if he had just said the word system. Lun Yu felt as if he had fallen through the ground, thinking that he had been discovered. Meanwhile, morning came, and a slightly strange sound came from his tent. He was studying a new force, a buoy of very concentrated energy that even emitted lightning. He was very pleased because that energy penetrated all his acupuncture points throughout his body. He thanked his shadow, who had been killing monsters for him all night, and now he had many crystals. He thought that if he wanted to move forward, he needed to create armor from the crystals of the energy flow. But the next time he used the system, he needed to be more careful, because last time, he almost revealed the secret. He sat down to rest for a while, and the system said that he had a total of 10,000 points of experience. Does he want to spend them on creating another shadow? In an instant, he jumped up and looked at me, wondering if he could create another shadow. He thought that if he had two shadows, he would be able to get twice as many destroyed monsters during the hunt. A second later, he said very happily that he wanted to create another shadow, and the system said that the shadow creation had begun. And immediately after that, dark energy began to come out of his body. With each passing second, it was coming out faster and faster and began to take on a certain shape in the front. The system said that the creation was complete. He looked at it and said that this was his new shadow. It was completely different from the first one. He said that if he now had two shadows, he had to come up with names for them, because how could he call them? In a moment, he figured it out and wrote the number two on the new shadow. Now they will be called the first shadow and the second shadow. Obviously, the shadows did not like these names. Suddenly, there was a knock on his door, and he quickly told the shadows to dissolve. He quickly opened the door and asked what was the important business. He thought it was the boys but it was Shun's sister, so he was surprised. She reported to him very seriously that she had just received an alert that all the strongest players had been attacked by assassins and that Luo Jin's team had also been attacked. He immediately asked if his friend Lonoji was okay. She said that no one was seriously injured except for Long Jin himself. He was very surprised, and she said that the Rifleman's Union was conducting a serious investigation into the case. She said that those who did this would be punished very severely, and their city would be punished as well. But right after that, Liu Xiong thought about it. 
and decided to ask her why she stayed in the camp, because she was supposed to go to training with the boys. She was confused and did not know what to say to him to such a direct question. After a moment, she began to say that when she looked at him, she noticed that he was a really good man. So she stayed in the camp on purpose to talk to him alone. He was also very confused, thinking that Sister Shun was thinking about something like this. She thought about it for a long time and only now decided to tell him. She abruptly caught him by the arm and said that he had to agree. He didn't know whether to be afraid or excited, because he had never experienced anything like this before, and he thought it was starting. And she said that she really wanted to learn sword techniques from him and offered him a friendly fight. He was just shocked. What a turn of events, but it looked completely different. But she was serious. She abruptly started to pull out her sword and said she was attacking so he should get ready. He said he was ready, but he thought that girl was definitely crazy. She said she was starting and went on the attack very quickly. She began to strike many blows and put pressure on Liyun Yu, who had to keep stepping back. He was deflecting her attacks and thought that each of her attacks was very precise and fast. Everything looked so good that you couldn't even find a weak spot. A moment later, he struck a counterattack, and she managed to block it, but she noticed that it was very fast. But he didn't stop there. He abruptly began to push her with force. It was explosive force. She immediately flew back and was amazed at his power. Suddenly, a first stage super tech was flying at her, but she managed to escape again. She could not figure out how she could lower his guard so that she could launch an attack that he could not repel. But in a moment, Lun Yu reappeared from the smoke and told her to come to him. The second he saw her, he made a very strong swing and said it was the second degree, but she managed to block the blow. When she heard about some degrees, she was surprised that it was possible to combine techniques in that technique. So she turned around and began to rapidly increase the distance. She was very confused and decided to keep running away because if she continued to fight, she would only help him to make more and more blows and she needed to understand his technique. But as soon as she thought about it, Liun Yu's sword was already flying straight at her and she managed to deflect the blow again, but Liun Yu said it was the third degree. She could no longer run away from him, and he caught her by the shoulder and said that this was the fourth degree. He was shocked, for she stopped his sword with her bare hand and said that if each attempt made him stronger, she would end it all with one blow. In an instant, her sword, which was also endowed with a certain energy, stopped at Liu Nui's head, and he was very surprised. And she sighed with joy and said that they had a winner. He was even afraid, because he could see that she was not a little crazy. She just held his sword with her bare hand and said that she had won, with a rather strange expression on her face. Lunui smiled and simply said that she was definitely not normal. A little more time passed and the sun began to set and the guys returned from training. Zhang noticed that Sister Shan's hand was rewound, so he asked her what happened to it. She replied that she had just scratched herself. Zhang went on to say that he and the boys went on a reconnaissance mission in the land of the Aoyu monster tribe. After that battle, the demons became much more vigilant in examining the borders of their own land. Zhang also said that even if Leon Yu's wounds were healed, it was unlikely that they would be able to attack the demons in the old way. But right at that moment, he had a very good idea, and he came up with a new strategy. He laughed and said that they would need the help of Sister Shuang. She was, of course, surprised that she was so much emphasized. A new day came, and Xuanyan said that all the things were already loaded into the car. Zhang said that as soon as her sister was ready, they could leave, but she was already ready. She was wearing a beautiful dress. She was very shy and asked if it was necessary. Zhang smiled and said that it had to be that way because it was a military tactic. She was disappointed because only now she realized what she had signed up for. And yesterday she stood up and very emotionally declared that she would not seduce any old monster leader. Zhang smiled again and said that she didn't like it very much, but it was all for the sake of their team. At that moment, Liu Yu joined in, asking what kind of stupid tactic was this in which Sister Shan needed to show her own appearance. He began to say that in the morning, while scouting, they had come across one of the elders who had ordered them to find and bring him a beautiful girl, Zhang went on to say that when he heard that, he came up with the plan, but this time the stakes are very high, because if Elder Ainu likes it, they must take this chance. 
If you catch bandits, you need to start with the main one, so they will catch them with a different attitude. They were in an ambush, and two demons were just passing on the road. Sister Shan asked if Zhang was sure there would be no problems. Zhang said that everything was going perfectly according to plan. He said that he would pretend that he was running after her, and when they noticed that there was a beautiful girl there, they would grab her and take her to the chief, and they would follow them, and if everything went well, they would find the nest. And then they will kill the elder, and the demons will be without a leader, and will behave very chaotically. Jang came up with the name for his ingenious plan, the love trap, but only he liked it. They began to say quietly that they could go out, but Jan told the beauty to wait. The monsters immediately noticed that there was a noise in the bushes. Suddenly, a beautiful girl ran out of the bushes, and the two monsters were very surprised. A moment later, another man jumped out of the bushes, shouting very loudly and running after the girl. He was shouting that he wanted to catch her and use her in a very interesting case, and she was shouting for someone to save her. But in fact, Yi Jang and Sister Shen could hardly stand the moment when they said those invented lines. But during that extraordinary chase, Jen stumbled over a rock. As a result, he just fell down, and the girl ran away screaming while those monsters just stood there and watched. When Zhang started to rise, he said how could he have fallen at such a crucial moment? But those monsters were slowly approaching him. The singing was so loud that he turned around and said it hurt him a lot. And at that moment, he looked exactly like a girl. The monsters grabbed him and carried him away, and he cried out to be let go, and Sister Shen thought that Zhang must have been much more beautiful than she was. The rest of the guys were just stunned by what happened. It was impossible. For her, as a girl, this situation is very humiliating. In no time, all the guys came to her, and she said that she had taken a fantastic turn. That guy was screaming in a panic. What are they going to do now? Not only had the plan failed, but Kren had been captured. Leonui told him to calm down because things are not as bad as they think. He told Nurse Shuang to open Zhang's system panel and track his position. In a second, she managed to find the exact location of their friend. Leonui said that nothing had actually changed in their plan, just the victim had changed so they shouldn't panic. Therefore, they need to stick to the plan and work together so that they can kill the demon king Aina. A little time passed and even more incredible things happened. Jen was dressed in women's clothes and handcuffed to the wall. He thought at first that he could free himself, but he realized that those handcuffs were very strong. A few minutes passed, and he heard that the monsters began to tell the king that they had found and prepared a beautiful girl for him. The king said that they should leave them alone and that no one should come in. It was something crazy. That monster king, dressed in a suit and holding flowers and a bottle of wine, when he saw that supposed girl, he immediately started smiling. He said that she was definitely waiting for him. At that time, Liun Yu was in a small battle and won it without any obstacles. He said they had dealt with the guards, and now they could go on. Sister Shuang said that the coordinates indicate that Jen is in a cave near them. She said that his position has not changed for a long time, which means that he has already been taken to the king, so they need to hurry. Liun Yu told the other two guys to keep up because the operation was really serious. They got to that big cave and were ready to do anything to save their friend and fulfill their mission. When that king began to approach Zhang, he kicked him hard and told him to get away from him. He also said that he felt sick from that monster. That monster caught him by the head and began to say that the girl was very violent. He told her to let him love her. Then the king said that since she was so violent, he suggested playing a game. The king asked if she was willing to play the game, and Zhang realized that his situation was very bad. Meanwhile, his friends were moving as fast as possible through those tunnels in search of their friend. Suddenly, Liun Yu heard some voices. He quickly told everyone to stop. He looked carefully. There were guards there. He said that they would not be able to pass there. Attacking the demons in their castle is a very bad idea. He suggests that Sister Shuang find another way. She said that it was the very last road that leads directly to the bedroom of the Demon King. The other guys said that they couldn't fight them in that place, right? At the time, Leonui was looking for other options on how they could save their friend. He noticed a ventilation duct that passed directly over his head. Of course, he had a brilliant idea, and he told Zhang to wait for him because he would be arriving soon. 
Suddenly, the chains that bound Jan were broken. Then the Monster King said that now they would play the game and it would be free. He said that the game is that she has to run away and he has to catch her because he really likes her resistance. Shang replied that it was a game for abnormal monsters. Then the Monster King attacked her and told her that the game was starting and to run away. In an instant, he jumped up and dodged his attack. He said that no one would run away. With a quick movement, he jumped over it and flew forward. And when he was in front, he kicked the monster in the head very hard. After that, Jang decided to use the chains he had. He ran very fast by the monster and wrapped him in chains. The monster did not expect that the girl was so strong as he thought. As a result, that monster was lying on the ground and Zhang tied him up with those chains. He also smiled and said that the game was over. But then the demon laughed and said that he didn't think the game was over. He was able to push Zhang very far back and he did it quite easily. And in a moment, the demon was flying at him and shouting how beautiful the girl was. Thanks to his frantic speed, he was able to jump on top of Jang and said that he would catch her. Jang started to say that he was a little brute. At that very moment, the venetization hatch began to open. A second later, Lun Yu appeared in that room, and he quickly attacked the monster and kicked it. Afterward, Liunui smiled and asked Jang what he thought of his timing. Right after Liun Yu, others entered the room and asked Zhang if he was okay, and he said that if they had waited a little longer, he would have learned something radically new. Then Liun Yu looked at the monster closely and noticed that something began to happen to it. The king of the monsters said that those damn humans had deceived him with such a beautiful girl. He changed dramatically and became much scarier. He said that they had touched his heart. Then Jan started laughing. He lifted his shirt and showed that he was a guy. After this, the demon changed even more, and at first he looked like a poor monster. In a moment, a very strong energy appeared in him. It came out of his body and spread around. Lu Nui was surprised. He did not know what was happening. And in a moment, that energy became much stronger, and some black yak threads appeared, flying chaotically around. Because of the actions of that monster king, a very strong wind began to blow there, and Zhang asked what that monster had done to make him have such power. Then Liu Yu looked at those threads and thought they were quite scary. He started screaming and releasing even more energy, and all the energy spun into a huge tornado that began to destroy everything. After the miracle dissipated, we could see Lun Yu slowly getting up from his knees. He was amazed and said that this was incredible power, for he had blown the whole cave apart with simple energy. As a result, he was left alone on a high cliff, and that part of the land was in the center of the tornado, so it did not change. He turned to those people to look at him. He changed completely, and his eyes seemed to burn from the inside because of the power he felt. He asked them if they were ready to die. Suddenly, an alarm sounded in that headquarters apartment. She said that she had detected energy of a very light color. The workers there were just in a stupor. They didn't know what to do. They panicked and told the head that the demon king, Ainu, had activated a super technique, and now he had advanced to the level of a royal demon. The man said that such a strong spell was a very big problem because it would destroy all the students. They started sending messages. They said to stop the competition and send shooters with golden crystals to evacuate all the students. He doesn't understand why those students would disturb that demon. The demon began to approach Leonui slowly, taking his time because he knew that he was very strong. He raised his hand and there was a special energy in it. He said the words so that the thing would rise. At that moment, some object that was near Leonui began to cut through the rocks. In another moment, he flew out of the rocks with great speed and flew to the king. Lunui was shocked at how dramatically his strength had changed. Now he realizes that they cannot defeat him. He thought that the threads he was squeaking earlier were already scary enough. And now things have become much worse, for the king has raised his sword and is preparing to attack. He made a mega strong blow and a very powerful technique came out of his sword. It flew like a knife in oil through the ground. Lunyu was sitting in the same place and that machine was rapidly approaching him. He thought that his techniques had become so terrible that he could not even move. At the last moment, he was saved by Sister Shuang. She pulled him by the collar and pulled him away from the attack. She shouted at him, What is he doing? What is he doing? Then she told him to get ready quickly because they had no time for games. In an instant, she drew her sword and began to draw the demon's attention to her. She began to make the first side attack with her sword.
Leonyu was sitting there, trembling with fear. His legs were shaking very badly. But he was trying to force himself to get up and stop being afraid. He noticed that there were two other boys lying next to him, Anji and Xiao Jiang, and he shouted to them and asked how they were doing. But the two of them were unconscious from the hurricane and did not hear his cries. And a second later, Sister Shuang received a mega strong blow that sent her flying into the rocks with great force. Lun Yu was even more frightened, for that monster king was terrifying him. The king came up and said that he was sorry because the real girl was very good. But because of what they did, he doesn't really feel sorry for them, and they will all die here. Liu Yu had already begun to scream to himself and was beating his legs to get them back under his control, to get up. But in a moment, the demon approached Sister Xuan and raised his sword upward to kill her with a single blow. Liu Yu continued to calm his own fear even more. This was the decisive moment. She had heard how Liu Yu struggled with his own fear, but only a miracle could save him, for the enemy's sword was already in front of his head. But at the last moment, when Lun Yu appeared from the back of that king's head, he was able to control his own fear. He struck the enemy a very powerful blow to the head. That fool was very unexpected. From that blow, the enemy flew into the rocks and disappeared in the smoke that appeared after the collision. He immediately asked her if Sister Shuang could get up. And she replied that she should ask him if he had gotten rid of his fear and his legs were no longer shaking. Lun Yu became normal again smiling and saying that the enemy no longer frightened him. But if it continued, he would definitely die. But he showed me the knife that was stuck in his leg and said that thanks to this stimulus, he accelerated quickly. He said that it was very good that she was okay because they had to get ready to run. A moment later, their car arrived, and it was just in time. Jang started to tell them to all get in the car quickly because this time they lost and they need to retreat quickly. Shuang's sister said that first they needed to find her brother and Xiao Jiang. She asked where they were. Leonui pointed uncertainly that they were far behind. Meanwhile, that monster was able to get out of the rubble. He said it was the same man who had already gotten him. It seemed that the demon had become even stronger, and he said that Liun Yu was a real bastard and would definitely be destroyed. He went up in the air and said that they were underestimating him very much. An even more terrible technique appeared in the hand of that demoniac king, and it was like lightning in a stream. Lun Yu was shocked at the power that Monster King had. He just pushed Sister Shuang very hard into the fight and yelled at her to run to the car. The next second, there was a huge explosion, the strongest they had ever seen. She was very much thrown back from that explosion, and Jang was able to catch her. He was emphasizing that they needed to get in the car. She shouted that she would not go anywhere without her brother. But suddenly, from the smoke where the blow had been, Liun Yu must have thrown those two guys into the car. They were still unconscious. They had received quite strong blows. In a moment, they threw them into the car, and Zhang told them to get ready to go. Sister Shuang, she said they really wouldn't wait for Lun Yu, Zheng said. If they don't leave now, they won't get another chance. And if they want to defeat such a strong opponent, a miracle must happen. She was confused. She didn't know what to do with them. But Zhang said to her not to worry, for if there is a miracle in that world. But she still couldn't understand what Zhang was trying to tell her. And she doubted very much that what they were doing was right. Zhang said, that the very miracle that can defeat him is Lun Yu. But Sister Shuang decided to turn around and was horrified to see something. She screamed for him to stop. Li Yun Yu was there, scared to death and running with all his might, shouting for them to wait for him. When Zhang learned that Long Yu did not fight the monster king, he was a little disappointed because he had high hopes that he would defeat him. Xuan's sister said that Zhang stopped the car because it was whitewashing Li Yun Yu, and Li Yun Yu himself was screaming and begging them to stop because he was about to get in. A moment later, that big, fastest car of all came to an abrupt stop. When Liun Yu sat down, he was very surprised by what Zhang said, and he said that Liun Yu had recovered so quickly because he had already wanted to exalt him as a hero. Sister Shuang asked Zhang how he escaped. Was it possible that he was able to finish off the Monster King? Liun Yu, with a strange expression on his face, began to say that how could he have destroyed him by himself? He said that he had realized that the king only gets stronger in a certain place, so he ran away from that place.
Zhang said that Lu Nui was actually quite smart and noticed that they made quite a lot of noise. Sister Shuang said that the most important thing was that they got out of that place. Leung Yu listened to their discussions, but in fact he knew what had happened because he had been there. When his friends ran away, he was left alone. He was already quite badly wounded. The king came up to him and said that it was very strange that he could withstand his thunderbolt and still be alive. Leung Yu was thinking how to get out of such a difficult situation, and the king said he stayed there for the sake of his friends. And suddenly he kicked again with tremendous force and said that this was a very touching story. That king was incredibly strong, and when he struck him, Liun Yu flew a great distance and smashed a giant stone with his back. The king laughed at him and said that a weakling like him wanted to defeat him. But suddenly Liun Yu spoke up. He calmly said that they must have left a long time ago and didn't know what was going on there. The king was surprised at what the boy was showing him, and Lung Yu said that the king was actually blind. Then he smiled and said he would show him something interesting. And in a moment, he changed completely and said menacingly that the king should say thank you to him. And immediately after that, he said that he would activate the shadow system. As soon as he said that, two bright threads began to seep out from under him. They were very fast, and he told number one and number two to start acting. The two bright threads surrounded him, and he was very much surprised. But he was not afraid of them, for he did not know what they were or what power they had. And in a moment, human-like entities began to manifest from that energy. Then he began to guess that these entities might have special powers, and he asked what they were. Then Lun Yu said with a smile, Did that king think that he had just stayed to sacrifice his own life? In fact, he did not want his friends to see his strength. The king was shocked, but Leung Yu continued to speak, for there are some things that cannot be shared even with friends. Then he said that enough talk and ordered number one and number two to kill him. In an instant, the shadow number two began to attack the cotton wool with great speed. The king was also mega fast and the Ming was able to dodge the blow. He was actually very much surprised and thought, what is this thing? He thought that it was some kind of monster. At that moment, Liun Yu addressed the king and told him not to relax. He smiled and said that he had forgotten, for he had another warrior just like him. And immediately after that, the number one shadow made a lightning attack on the queen's back. The king began to scream in pain. It was a very unexpected attack. At that very moment, the second shadow joined the battle and a fierce battle broke out. Then Liun Yu stood up and said that he had almost succeeded and had to go back. The wounded king was even more surprised and began to ask where his enemy was going. And Liun Yu answered him that of course he was running away from that place. This made the king even more angry, and he began to shout that he was a real bastard if he wanted to run away like that. And didn't he already want to kill him? At that very moment, Lunui's soldiers continued to attack the king, so he could not prevent him from simply leaving that place. Leung Yu told the king to calm down, for Leung Yu could not defeat him anyway, and he did not say that he wanted to fight the king face to face, but only that the king wanted to fight him. Hearing this, he was even more angry, but he could not help it. As Leung Yu was walking away, he noticed that it was very strange to call the enemy a scoundrel in battle, because it was a battle to the death and all methods were good. So he smiled even harder and said that the king was a little stupid and started walking away from that place. He calmly began to retreat, and his shadows were in full combat readiness and detained the king. Suddenly in the car, Sister Shuang had an attack. She began to cough sharply and very strongly. Liun Yu would immediately ask her what had happened to her, and she would tell him not to worry because she was fine. He immediately began to say that he was very sorry because it was all his fault. She said that it was not his fault because it was the first time he had met a monster of royal rank. And it was good that he remained conscious, because usually ordinary people would have given up long ago. Zhang confirmed his sister's words. He said that Lunui should look at those two sleeping beauties on their backsides. They just showed the standard reaction to such a royal monster. To make himself seem more believable, Liun Yu said that this was his real reaction to such a meeting. Suddenly, a system reminder came to Lun Yu, and he immediately thought that his shadows had returned, which meant that the monster king was destroyed. The system said that the battle was over, and at that moment the king was alive, but he was very exhausted. The next message from the system was just incredible. It said that his shadows were dead. Longbai was shocked. He thought that his shadows would last much longer, 
and that they could even destroy the king. Next, he was presented with other information, saying that since the shadows were dead, he could revive them, and the system asked him whether he wanted to revive X, X directly or with the help of his mind. He was wondering what he should do, so the system said that reviving them with the help of the mind would improve their level and raise them to the level of living shadows. He had to make a decision. The level upgrade cost 2,000,000 ,000 points, so he thought about it a bit and chose to revive with the help of the mind. At that very moment, some threads appeared that were invisible to humans, but the monsters saw them and began to react to them, so Jang asked a logical question. Why did all the monsters around them go crazy? In a moment, the system said that the revitalization and leveling up was complete, and at the same second, a voice started to speak, saying that a king-ranked monster had appeared at the competition, so the competition was suspended and all participants had to leave the area. For safety, arrow warriors will appear there. Jang was a little outraged, because what would happen to all the points they had gained, but he decided not to do anything stupid and to follow the order. Jang decided to talk to Lunuai about the situation, but he noticed that Lunui was sleeping and said that he must be very tired. Meanwhile, the king sat down to rest and said that although he had been able to kill the two entities, he had allowed the boy to escape. But at that very moment, something incredible happened to the first shadow, and the energy began to boil very strongly in the place of its body, and the king fell over backwards from the suddenness of it. But the shadow rose into the air and began to disintegrate into nothingness. In that bright light, something very active was happening, but the king was at a loss to understand what was going on and what was going to happen next. And when that bright energy dissipated, that first shadow appeared there, and it said to the king that he did not expect that they would meet again so soon. It was Lunyu in the body of a shadow, asking if the king missed him. Then he realized that it was that kid and he was inside that thing. As soon as he said that, Liunyu was already within striking distance. The king was amazed at the speed of that thing. He did not have time to bow down. Lunyu was able to strike a strong blow, and the king began to fly away with great speed. After a moment, he managed to hold on, and he realized that he was in a very bad position, for he had little strength left. He thinks he needs to recite the spell again and gain strength. In a moment, the king raised his hand up and said that if the boy dared to return, he would destroy him. Leung Yu became alarmed when he saw this. In a moment, he began to wonder what the king was up to. He said that he was going to perform some tricks again. And suddenly, Leung Yu thought that some kind of magic thing had appeared, some kind of magic formation. Leung Yu thought that the king had been in that circle all the time. He did not understand how he had not noticed it before. Maybe the shadows have special powers to see things that people don't? Meanwhile, a circle appeared in the sky just like the one on the ground, and lightning began to appear in it. In a moment, a very rapid flow of extremely strong energy was thrown down on that king. Lung Yu realized that the king's strength had been restored, and he also realized that the magic formation must be the source of his power. He needs to figure out a way to destroy that magic formation. And in the meantime, the monster king says he's almost ready. And a second later, with frantic speed, he rushed into the attack. He said he would take Liun Yu to hell. In a second, he rose to a great height and took out a fire sword, preparing to launch a very powerful attack. The impact caused a very loud explosion and everything around shook. When the smoke cleared, the king said that the devil was very fast, and he did not understand where he had gone. But in a moment, a voice came from behind, and a strong kick was already at the head of the monster king. The king was taken by surprise, but he made every effort to repel that unexpected attack. Liun Yu was thrown back, but he immediately caught the ground and was ready to continue the attack of the Wada. A moment later, he struck again, but the king was able to dodge that blow. But very unexpectedly, that king was able to raise his speed level and caught Lunui by the leg. He made a very strong swing and said that he had already gotten him because he would be around him like a flea. The king threw him away with all his might, hoping that he would hit a rock and cause him harm. But as Lung Yu was flying, he started to smile a little because he had a plan. The king noticed that he was smiling and wondered what he was up to. From that throw, Liunyu flew toward that magical formation, and the king thought 
that he must be trying to destroy its source of power. In a moment, Liu Yu turned around and began to reach for the spring that was hanging in the air. The king was shocked, thinking that this man could see his magic formation. And in a second, Lun Yu managed to get to that spring and grab hold of it. And he took that source and simply broke that magical system into two halves. He destroyed it. The king of monsters could not believe his eyes because it had happened. In a split second, that monster king jumped up and down and was already at Lunui's side, and he was just so furious. He struck an incredible blow at Lun Yu, and he flew down with great speed. He survived, but the pain was very severe. His body was shadowed by this blow, and it began to smoke. Leung Yu said that even though he no longer had a connection to his source of power, his power alone was much greater. Leung Yu thought that he couldn't attack him for a long time, because he was weaker than him so he should try to destroy him with one punch. Lenui moved sharply to try his special attack. He made a very powerful strike. The explosion was incredibly powerful. But unfortunately, the king of monsters was able to successfully dodge that powerful attack. He smiled and said that it was very formidable, but now it was his turn to attack. Lung Yu also smiled because he said that the king had forgotten that he had more than one opponent. The king was shocked. He did not expect such a turn of events for there was already a second shadow from his backside. He tried to dodge, but he failed, and the other shadow struck him with a powerful blow, so strong that he began to spin in flight. And Liun Yu, in turn, was also preparing to receive the king in order to strike again. In this way, they made dozens of blows, and the king was like a soccer ball. The king realized that this guy's attacks are a continuous stream, and he doesn't pause at all, so the king can't get away. The king realized that Long Yu knows that any attack he makes won't do much damage to the king, so he decides to attack nonstop to just wipe him out. The king was flying from one attack to another, thinking that this time they would surely defeat him and he would die so humiliated. At one point, Tomi sharply caught Leonui by the leg and thought that he would not lose so easily. Leung was caught off guard. He didn't expect this. Liun Yu cried out to him what he was doing, and the king climbed up the mountain and clung to his neck. The king began to scream like a madman, and he said that if anyone would die, it would be the two of them. Leon Yu did not understand, but within moments, he felt that the king's body began to swell. It was very bad because the king decided to commit suicide and take the life of Leon Yu at the same time. But the demon's enormous face was swollen to an incredible size. Lun Yu could not get out of his very powerful grip, and he had very little time left. At a special moment, when the peak was almost reached, the demon cried out that he was entering the form of a warrior. And a few seconds after that, there was a very loud explosion, actually one of the strongest explosions in a very long time in that world. It was a special group of clouded skies. The thieves stopped abruptly and said, was someone really able to defeat a king-level demon? They said, are they really late? But suddenly they started saying to look closely because there was someone in the smoke. The man immediately noticed the armor of the blue man. When the armor became more visible, the man said that he was a warrior from the Temple of War. At that very second, Liu Yu woke up very abruptly. Zhang immediately asked him if he had a nightmare. He said it was a nightmare, and he thought that it was very good that he was lucky, because otherwise he would have been completely exposed. He received a message from the system, congratulating him that he was able to defeat the most powerful demon in that zone and he thought that he managed to protect its first shadow and not die himself. In a moment, he received a lot of messages. These were the rewards for killing a king-ranked demon. He received 10,000 experience points. He also received the king's crystal, also the soul of the Ainu king. In addition, he received a special monster box. Also, the system asked him if he wanted to take the power of the Ainu demon king. In an instant, Liun Yu shouted joyfully, Zhang started yelling at him that he was scared. In a moment, Lung Yu saw something and immediately called Zhang's attention to look there. He looked closely and noticed something. He said that the monsters must have caught someone. Wasn't that Lizzie? They asked why she was there alone and where her team was? Did Lu Nui happily suggest that they should save her? Zhang did not understand what he meant by the phrase they. He got up and said that they were from the same institute and they should help each other and Zhang told him to sit down because it was dangerous. Leung Yu rushed into battle, and Zhang asked why he was so sharp as soon as he woke up. 1298. Sister Shuang suddenly said that maybe Lu Nui was in love with that girl. 
Meanwhile, that girl fought with all her might against those monsters, but there were quite a few of them. She realized that she was in a very bad situation. She couldn't understand why those monsters were so mad. She cut them down left and right and shouted at them to disperse. But by a coincidence, it lost its balance and was struck by a tentacle. Due to this situation, she was knocked down and fell to the ground, and her swords flew away from her. At the same second, the monster was already swinging to strike her with a powerful blow. She closed her eyes because she was really scared and thought she was dead. <laughs> but when she opened her eyes, she saw that Liunyu was holding that monster by the throat and addressing her. He turned around and asked her worriedly if she was hurt. She was both shocked and amazed. She said she was fine. That monster continued to growl, but in one second, he got a punch in the face. In a few moments, Liunyu figured out the other monsters. He said it was the last one, and the girl remembered his name. She watched him closely and noticed that he was very cool. After that, Zhang began to speak to them, saying that they might have had enough because they needed to get out of that place. When the girl looked at him, she started shouting that he was a pervert and very strange, and he shouted back that he was not. Liunyu was very kind to offer her a ride. She thanked him very much and said that it would be a very wonderful thing to do. Meanwhile, the events moved to the Happy Wind Institute. The two boys who were wounded in the battle with the demon of royalty never regained consciousness. Lun Yu was angry because the people who were harassing those boys were very careless with them. At that moment, one of those guys recognized Leung Yu, but the other guy said he didn't know him. The first guy was very surprised that his friend hadn't heard of them because their team is very cool. The guy started to say that thanks to them, the city of Happy Wind had risen to the 30th city in the ranking, so their city would receive a bigger reward. Thanks to them, the city is not lagging behind. In an instant, the principal appeared from behind Liunyu, lightly hitting him and saying that his favorite student had come. Liunyu turned around abruptly and began to say that he had scared him a lot. So the principal began to pat him on the head so that he would not be afraid anymore, but Leon Yu said with even more anger that if he did not stop patting him, he would hurt him. After that, the director began to say that Leon Yu should look at himself, how dirty and pitted he was and he wanted to help him, but Leon Yu was already hysterical and told him to leave him alone. Then he went to look for his friends, and the principal went completely crazy, acting like a pervert, and he wondered why he didn't see his friend Liu Nojie. Suddenly, he was called by the girl he had saved, and he calmly turned to her and asked what she wanted. Suddenly, another boy appeared there and asked Liun Yu about his friend. He said that she should have been back by now and was probably resting. She asked him if he was seeing that girl, because he cares about her very much. Lunui said why should he answer her question? Then that girl decided to say everything. She was on the team with that Lunogie, and she said that she was fine. She only got a couple of scratches. Lunui was happy when he found out. As they walked in the same direction, she asked if Lunui would like to have dinner with her. La Yunyu was a little embarrassed, and she said that she would repay him for saving her. She would call the yogi to her dormitory, and she would feed him. He apologized and said that he could not come because he had other plans for that evening. Then she asked him what day he would come to her. Leung Yu was already angry and said that he had already said that another day means another day. Zhang was spying on them and crying. He said that finally their Liun Yu had grown up. Some man behind them was shocked because Zhang was wearing women's clothes. He said he was disgusted to see that. 1337 Leung Yu came to his room and said that at last he could look at the reward for the Demon King and how much it was worth. 1338. He was very pleased because he had special crystals and a special box, 1339. But at one point he tensed up because he had something in his hand, 1340. He wondered if this thing was not one of the legendary ones, for it must have been a Van Du stone, 1341. Liunyu rushed to find the book he needed, for he remembered for certain that he had seen such a sign in the ice, 1342. When he opened the page, he noticed that the marks matched perfectly. It was said that the stone was extremely rare and unique, that if it was improved, it could create a whole world, and that whoever improved it would be able to rule that world. Long Yu was happy, saying that this time he was able to take possession of a real treasure, and that it was not for nothing that the demon king blew himself up. He said to the system with a happy face that he wanted to improve that stone, 
The system said that 30,000 experience points were required to upgrade the Vendu crystal. Liuni was shocked. He asked why it was so expensive. He said that it was already his stone. After a moment, he came to terms with the fact that this procedure was very expensive. He just closed his eyes, and the system said that the improvement was complete. In an instant, Lun Yu appeared in a certain space. He was surprised that the enhancement was over so quickly. He asked if this was the world that created the stone. He looked happy, especially when he looked at the huge and clear sky. He had never seen anything like it. But in a moment, he was disappointed because although there was a lot of space, he could only sit on that piece of hard material. 1352, he threw down the crystal and said that there was no room at all on that piece. But something incredible happened, that crystal just stuck into that platform. Liunui was very scared, but the platform immediately began to grow from all sides. Lung Yu wondered how it was that the piece of solid material grew when given crystals. He said that was good luck, and if so, he was ready to feed him. In an instant, he began to throw many different crystals in different directions. After a while, Lung Yu fell to the ground, happy, saying that he was a little tired because he had fed the platform more than a hundred crystals. But that platform has grown so many times over, he said it was definitely worth it. Did he say that he didn't know if that thing would help him at all? For a moment, he felt sad, thinking that he had spent more than a hundred coins on something he knew nothing about. Suddenly, the system said that that dimension was called the Starry World and it belonged to him. The system said that that world would become stronger, depending on the progress of the master in the outside world. He realized that it was also for defense, the golden bell, the military uniform, and now that world. He understands that if he shows it to someone, they will burn him alive. But the system said that the world is still very small, and it can accommodate very little power and Lonui was angry with the system because there is just infinite space, and how can it say that it is small? He was desperate because he had spent half a day 30,000 points and more than a 100 crystals on that thing, and he couldn't use it. He lay there thinking about that world, thinking that perhaps he only needed a few more crystals, and then he would be unrivaled in power. He was like an addicted person who cannot get rid of a bad habit. He was going through withdrawal. He realized that he had already thrown a lot into that space, and it was useless. He really wanted to throw another crystal and see what would happen. He pulled himself together and began to analyze in cold blood how much he needed to throw and why. But at one point, he started getting calls from someone. I think it was the girl who invited him to the dormitory. She told him to quickly change his clothes and run to the square, and Liun Yu asked her what happened there so she could be more specific. This was the square of the Happy Wind Institute. Leonui ran there and said that he thought Jang had gotten into some trouble again. Suddenly, he noticed that his comrades were standing in the corner, and they were calling him over. When he approached, he was not happy to see the girl he had saved. Jang changed his clothes and told the girl to go to her own team and not to hang around them. And Sister Shuang looked at it all and said that youth was so beautiful. Suddenly, someone jumped out from behind Liun Yu and put her arms around him. She had a nice voice and said that she was very happy that he was okay. Lung Yu came back and said in surprise that she was a silly girl who had frightened him. She began to tell me that she had heard that an assassin had been sent to him, just like to Luo Jun, and she said that she was very worried. But when she saw that he was fine, she immediately calmed down. Meanwhile, the girl they had rescued was standing on the side, watching and getting a little angry. In a moment, Leon Yu heard a voice saying that it must be Leon Yu and that rich team. It was those guys, Ludzun and the other. He said that he thought they had all been killed long ago. While Leon Yu was thinking that those vicious dogs were picking on them again, Jang began to answer them. He said that they hadn't seen each other for so long, but they hadn't gained any strength, but they had become stronger in their images. Did the guy who insulted them take Zhang's clothes and say that the major wanted to start fighting? The insolent man was confused when Zhang calmly replied that he did not want to fight. But he will confidently say that if they want him, he is ready to fight. In an instant, the insolent man let Zhang go because someone came up to them. It was Teacher Lee, and he was very focused and said that the youth at that time were very hot-tempered. So he calmly told the girl Lin Shuang not to make any sudden movements. He asked her to give him her weapon, and she smiled and said that he hadn't noticed. 
Jang told the boy to thank Teacher Lee because if he had dared to attack them, he would have been killed. She said that the guy would have been killed in the city. Liun Yu thought that this was all very good. Although it was not strong, they still had a team morale. Suddenly, the man called all the students to him. He said that the ranking of the competition had just appeared. He said that it was the first time that the city of Happy Wind had entered the top 50, and they were in 48th place, and he was very pleased with all the students because it was their merit. Therefore, it was decided to award everyone. They want to open a treasury and award everyone according to their achievements. All the students began to rejoice very much because they had received such wonderful news. He said that Tangan would take them all to the treasury to choose their gifts. After a while, they approached a large and snow-white building, the treasury. Leung Yu was amazed at the size of that building, and Jang said that it was almost the same as his house. The director said that he would now announce their places in the ranking, and they would enter the building in order. In a moment, a holographic panel appeared behind him, and he said it was time to announce their places in the ranking. This time, student Zhang's team takes the win. All the students are shocked. It's very unexpected for them. They said that the team is even higher in the ranking than the team from Luo Jin. But the Lods team was also shocked. They couldn't believe that they were not in first place. Zhang rejoiced and said to Liun Yu that since they were first, they should choose the gifts. But Liun Yu thought that was not a good idea because they would attract too much attention. Suddenly, they turned around sharply because someone started shouting at them to wait. It was that guy from the Luo Jin team? He started blaming Lun Wei that he had only awakened a year ago and he couldn't have scored so many points and therefore their team couldn't have won first place. But suddenly that girl appeared in front of them. She stood up for him and said that she had seen his technique and that it was because he was very talented in fighting. But the boyfriend Hao pushed her away and told her to stay out of his business and advised Lun Yu not to hide behind girls. He said that Leo Nui had only relied on Lin Shuang in his battles so he wanted to challenge him to a fight to show what he was really capable of. He looked at that girl and felt sorry for her, and that impudent man shouted, Did Lun Yu hear what he said? Lun Yu began to answer him that he would not have been able to resist attacking him in front of everyone and humiliating him anyway. So he said he would fight him and teach him a lesson. Lun Yu's friends began to say that Hu was unlucky and would regret it. They smiled and said that Hao could have picked on anyone, but he chose the worst option of all. The other two from Zhang's team also shouted in support of Liu Nui to show that impudent man who they really are. In an instant, that Hao began to attack very rapidly. He said that he had tolerated him for a long time, but now he would give him a punishment. Liu Nui just jumped back and did it with great ease. Hao was very surprised, but did not draw any conclusions yet because it was only one blow. In an instant, dozens of blows were made, and Lung Yu dodged them all without straining. He was completely calm and was waiting for the right moment when it would be his turn to strike. At one point, Hao called him a flea, jumping around. He said that he wanted Lunui to start attacking as well, in the hope that he could catch him. Lunui said that if Ho asks for it, he will start attacking. And in a moment, Lun Yu's fist was flying into the face of the insolent man, and he was frozen with surprise. In one second, a clear and strong dura that hit the target made that impudent man cool down a bit. The students were shocked, asking each other if Hao had just flown away from one punch. And after the first and very successful strike, Lun Yu's friends immediately began to rejoice and encourage him. It seemed that it was over, but Ho was still conscious and began to mumble something. In an instant, he got up and started shouting that he was not talking, that he was giving up, and like a madman, he was going to attack. Lung Yu was calm and thought, what does that guy not like so much? He was screaming as if it was his last fight. He was looking at Lun Nui vigilantly to avoid getting a direct hit again. But a second later, his face crumpled up quite badly from the side impact, and there was a characteristic pop and poor Hao flew far back for the second time. Other students began to discuss that Li Yunhui had completely defeated Hao. He was lying there like he was unconscious. And the students said that they thought he was the strong one. And he was just lucky to be on the team with lots. A moment later, the principal came up to them and said that they had stopped fighting and that they had already found out who was stronger because it was time to go into the treasury and choose gifts. Leung Yu bowed his head and said that this would be the right thing to do for this boring activity had already taken up too much time. 
But in a moment, the director was sharply tense from what happened there. Leung Yu did not notice him yet and said to Zhang that they could go to the treasury. But that crazy man was standing on his ass with a knife in his hand. The director started shouting that Liu Nui was being careful. And in an instant, Leung Yu turned around and noticed that Hu had completely lost his mind. He attacked and shouted that he would never lose to him and that Leung Yu would definitely die. In an instant, he made a rather quick strike, but it was like a game for Liu Nui, he easily dodged it. After that, he caught Hao's arm sharply and broke it in one clear movement in a rather painful place. He was really fed up with those games. All the students were shocked that he actually did that. They immediately said that it would be better not to piss him off next time. Hao was screaming in pain. He was screaming that he would get Long Yu. He continued to shout and told the director that Liu Yu had broken his arm on purpose and that he would report him to the union and be punished. The director himself was shocked by the situation and said that Ho had just wanted to kill Lo Nui, so the fact that he only broke his arm was not bad. The director said that he would definitely report the fact that he wanted to kill a person to the union. Liu Yu asked if they could enter the treasury and Directo said that it was high time they went in. They all slowly and joyfully began to enter that treasury. The girl said to Liu Yu that Ho was a bastard. But was it not too much to break his arm? He said that if he was not taught well, he would bother them again. She listened attentively, and he said that Hu had already tried to kill him once. He told her to remember that you should never leave your enemies a chance to counterattack. They came to the door and said that it was finally possible to open it because they could not wait. When they looked inside... They noticed that there were various objects that were very precious. They rejoiced like children, because these were class A items, and they are such that no amount of money can buy them. The two boys immediately found very interesting items and began to figure out whether they were suitable for them. Suddenly, Liun Yu was called by his sister Shuang, who told him to look at what she had found. She said that this thing was much more interesting than knives and swords. Those balls were called technique transfer balls, and they were very precious. In a moment, she threw him one to look at, but told him not to let it fall on the ground. It was very unexpected. Leung Yu read that the Aurora Borealis killing light technique was hidden in that sphere. Sister Shuang said that this technique allows you to master sword skills in a perfect style in an instant. She said that it would be perfect for Leung Yu's technique. Did Liun Yu think that this technique was created for him and that he could still choose it? But in an instant, his system scanned the space and said that a very valuable object had been found and the owner should not miss it. He glanced at the side wall and noticed a gorgeous bow. Sister Shuang was surprised because he put the sphere back and said he would look again. He came and took the bow and Sister Shuang said that the sphere was the best thing for him. But in a moment, she also noticed it and was amazed at how old the bow was. It had some special emblems on it, and Leung Yu said that he had decided and he wanted to take it. Was Sister Shuang shocked that because of that old bow, he would not take the best technique for it? He said that he did not know why, but as soon as he saw that bow, he realized that it was his destiny. Leung Yu took that bow and just left, Sister Shuang questioning him to think and not make quick decisions. She was disappointed and called Liun Yu a stupid child. Her brother was at the side. He asked if her sister had chosen something. He also said that the equipment was perfect for Liun Yu. She said she would give it to him and he could do whatever he wanted with it. He held the sphere in his hands and thought, why does he need it? Jang turned to Liun Yu and said that he had chosen the prize and wanted to run away from them right away. He apologized and said that he was just excited about his new bow and wanted to get home to try it out. So he forgot about everyone. Suddenly, a guy with glasses gives him that special technique. He said that his sister didn't need the thing, so she gave it to him. And he didn't need it either, so he gave it to Lunai. He also said that he thinks his sister chose that thing to give you, but she would never say that herself. Lung Yu started to doubt. He said that it was also very expensive, but the other guy said that Lung Yu should take that sphere. He said that Hao's family was large, and many of them would want to take revenge on him, so he had better prepare well. And he said that Shuang's sister was probably of the same opinion. Zhang also blasted him and told him to take that sphere away. Then Liun Yu said that he would take it and thanked them all. And he thought that he had not felt the warmth of friendship for so long. After a while, he came home and took off his clothes and laid down on the bed. 
He was quite tired during the day and wanted to rest a little. But a moment later, he told the system to learn a new technique. The system said that 4,000 points were needed to quickly learn a new technique. And Lonui immediately agreed and said that this was not the first time it had ripped him off. In an instant, that balloon flew into the air and howled, and Leon Yu was even a little surprised. Immediately after that, the sphere began to open and deep blue energy began to emanate from it. Suddenly, all that energy turned into blue threads and rushed to be absorbed into Lunyu. The system said that the killer Aurora technique had been learned. He said that every time he was forced to learn a skill, it killed him, and he immediately mentioned the bow so that the system would tell him something about it. The system congratulated him for getting a bow with the runes of the seventh monster, Veda. Liun Yu said that he knew it was the call of fate. But in an instant, he realized what kind of seventh Veda it was, that it was a black raven. The system said that the weapon contained the soul of a warrior whose hands grew from the wrong place. Liun Yu wondered if that warrior was calling him. But he said even if there is a warrior's soul there, how can it help him and how can he use it? But in an instant, another message came from the system saying that he could upgrade the system. She said that after the leveling up, the special seal on that weapon, that bow was called a raven, would be removed. In a moment, and the system upgrade was complete, Lunui was excited and said that he thought it would take six months, like last time, he said, for the system to unseal the crow. And at that very moment, something very strange began to happen. A very powerful energy began to pass through Lunyu's body. He was in a state as if he had taken some hallucinogenic drugs. His eyes were spinning. A little time passed and he opened his eyes. He was in some other dimension again. At one point, he saw huge metal rods in front of him. He was immediately horrified and said that it was a real cage. Suddenly, a large silhouette spoke to Leong Yu and asked him how he managed to get in. Lunui began to ask if he was the one who was called the crow because he came to break the seal. But he said he needed power and was willing to exchange his freedom for power. At last, a large shadow began to approach and told him not to talk nonsense, that he could free him. Li Yunyu immediately started talking to the system to remove the seal, but the system said that such a thing requires a lot of internal technology, and he didn't have enough of it right now. The raven watched with great attention what would happen next, and Li Nui said that he wanted the system to use all the energy it had at the moment. The system responded that it had started to draw internal energy. A moment later, the system said that the progress was complete and all its energy was at zero, and the chain holding the seal was only slightly scratched. Raven said that he had talked so much, but in the end he could do nothing. Raven called Leon Yu a stupid liar. He was a little shocked to hear such insults, but asked about the seal. What was it? The raven said. He said that the seal was very difficult and consisted of three layers and that Leon Yu had broken only the very top of the first layer and a lot more to go. But the raven said that he would give him a little of his own power. In an instant, three very bright threads of energy escaped from that gigantic cage. They looked like birds, and Leonui asked what they were. In a moment, they turned into real crows. They would now listen to Leonui's orders, and the crow said that if he freed him, he would give him much more power. Lunyu liked it very much. He said that the raven was very generous and he would try to help him. Then the raven said that they had agreed, but now he was very tired. He told Lunyu to get out of his world, and in an instant his body began to dissolve. He was screaming because it was like an endless spiral. Everything was spinning around him. After a while, he opened his eyes. He was lying on the bed and holding on to that bow and he realized that he had returned to reality. He was also very tired and decided to sleep and rest for a while. After some time passed, Lungbi rested and went on business. He came to the Van Wei house and was surprised that there were still houses of this kind in their century, because it did not look like a pawn shop. When he was considering whether he had come to the right address, someone approached him. He was a short man, and he politely asked what brought the guy to his pawn shop. The man said that they had a lot of things, and that they could help him evaluate some of his things. Liun Yu said that he did not come to buy anything, but in fact he had another business. Suddenly, Liun Yu voiced that he had heard that they had banned goods. Then that old man smiled and said that he understood everything, that the guy wanted to discuss business, so they should talk inside. 
The man realized that the conversation would be very interesting and offered tea for the guest. They sat down at the table, and the old man asked what his friend had come to sell him. Something valuable. Leon Yu said that it was not valuable at all and told his grandfather to name the price for the crown of the demon king Ainu. When Leon Yu was drinking tea, his grandfather thought that the boy looked very simple, but he had such a valuable thing. In a moment, the old man showed me on his fingers how much he was willing to pay. Leon Yu realized that his grandfather had offered him 150000 and he said that it was too little, because the thing was worth much more. But when his grandfather said that he had quoted a price of 1,500,000, Liun Yu was surprised. That old man said that Liun Yu was a very promising young man and had a lot of strength. He said he wanted to be friends with him. Then Liun Yu said, to make sure that the old man was not deceiving him, he suggested that he look at some other things. My grandfather was amazed. He said that there was a battle uniform of the demon elder I knew, as well as a staff and a ring and a whole set, he said. He said that for all of it, he was worth 12 million. After that, Liun Yu took out something else and asked how much the parchment with the inscriptions was worth. Did that old man seem shocked because it was parchment with the runes of the five Waidu? Now Liun Yu was surprised because his grandfather told him to take the thing away because he could not take it. He also advised him that he should never show that parchment to anyone else. Liun Yu was a little uneasy, and he realized that the parchment was something very scary. Meanwhile, his sister was working hard to earn money, and she sat down to rest because she was very tired. She said that her brother's money was almost gone, and that he could not pay for his father's treatment alone, so she had to help. She has already asked the medical staff for a deferred payment, so she should try. In an instant, she received a message. A voice said that a transfer had been sent to her card, and she needed to confirm it. She was shocked. She received 300000 on her account. She did not understand where it came from, but did her brother send it to her? A little time passed, and she started to enter the ward and said that she was back. There were some strange people there. She immediately asked who they were. My mother answered that as soon as my sister left the room, they came in and stayed there all the time. After a moment, the man asked if she was Ms. Liu Zhuan, because they sent three Weidu helmets for her and she had to sign for them. She immediately started signing and thought at the time that those helmets must be very expensive. Those people said that everything was already set up and they just needed to put on their helmets and start. My sister said that my brother must have sent it. She said that mom and dad should quickly put on those helmets, but mom said that they looked very strange and wouldn't they get into trouble downstairs? My sister started to put it on and said, how can there be any problems if Liu Yu bought it for her? She put on that helmet and started looking for the button that would turn on the system. A moment later, she succeeded, and something began to project onto the screen. A moment later, her eyes began to close, and she seemed to fall asleep. Just a few seconds later, she appeared at the place where Liu Yu was studying. Her father and mother came after her, and her father said that the place seemed very large. And right after that, they noticed that their father had legs. The father was crying like a child. He said that his legs no longer hurt and he could even jump up and down. And suddenly Liu Yu spoke to them, saying that they had not seen each other for a long time. My mother immediately rushed to him, saying that he was so grown up. And they had a special relationship with their father. Liu Yu told him that if he pissed him off, he would delete the code and his legs would disappear, his father said that he would not intimidate him with that. He said that his sister must have been very tired because she was taking care of her parents all the time. She said it was much harder for him because he was always earning money. After that, my mother asked a logical question. Where will they go now? Lun Yu said that they did not have to go anywhere because from today, this was their home. A little time passed and he said that he was leaving and my mother told him to remember to come back for lunch. He was walking around and thought that he was very bored. He wanted to go back to the arena and destroy monsters so badly, but there is now live video surveillance, and if they find out about him, there will be problems. But suddenly he came up with a very good idea of how he could enter that arena. In an instant, he ordered the system to move him to the arena. He wants to try out a new plan. He changed his account and name to Munyu and entered the arena as the number one shadow. It was a brilliant plan. Now he can fight to the fullest and no one will even know it's him. He fought one battle after another, 
and in every battle he was victorious. After a while, he stopped to look at the statistics. He won ten fights in a row. His assistant, Pedro, said he was very cool. He studied the ratings and said that it was very easy to fight sudden people all the time. At that very moment, a special panel appeared in front of him, and he was interested in it. A man named Dabia Bey challenges Munyu to a fight, and another challenges him to a fight. Meanwhile, a guy was sitting there, bored, thinking that he couldn't find a decent opponent during the whole day. His name was Tang Chazhen, and he was one of the ten candidates for the ten cities of the heavenly clouds. When he was sitting there, some people noticed him. They said that he was called the most talented in the whole city. They admired him. They ran up to him and asked if they could have his autograph. He was kind and sincerely signed autographs because he believed that it was support for him. But suddenly another person appeared there and told him to sign it for him. But in a moment, the three of them were very surprised, and the guy started asking if there was a call to fight. Tanjojin began to shout that someone had lost Pedro, but he said that he had come himself. That boy was very surprised that someone brought him a challenge to fight on a simple piece of paper. But Pedro said, he said that the paper had already been signed, and that if he had sent it by email, the message would not have been read. Pedro said that he didn't think that Zhou Chen would be such a talker. And in a moment, the guy snapped and started yelling at Pedro because he had made him sign by fraud. Meanwhile, Mun Yu was sitting and waiting in the arena of the Vedu, thinking that it was taking too long and that Pedro would not let him down. Suddenly, someone began to appear in front of him, and he thought it was Pedro returning with news. But it turned out to be that guy he accepted the call and came. He immediately asked if it was Pedro Munoz, because if it was, he ate a lunch worth 40 coins so that El Munoz would not forget to give it to him. Meanwhile, on the big screen, everyone had already begun to gather, because I noticed that someone had challenged Tanjochen to a fight. The girls started to discuss. They said that this guy was new and probably much weaker than their hero. One of them said that the other guy was also handsome and she wanted to become his fan, while others said that she would be a traitor if she did that. Jochen said that Munyu was apparently a simple crystal shooter, so he asked if Munyu knew that he was already a silver crystal shooter. Munyu said that he knew everything, then Jechen said that his opponent was very brave. Jochen began to prepare for the battle and said that if Munyu thought he would succumb to him, he was very much mistaken. Munyu said that this was wonderful because he had already thought that Zhouchen might not want to fight. While Munyu was talking, Zhechen struck with lightning speed. He barely managed to avoid that blow. He leaned back sharply at the last moment. Then Munyu thought that his opponent was really very cool, and that it was not for nothing that he was called the most talented. Immediately afterward, Munyu withdrew to have time to react to the attack. Munyu said that he honestly thinks that Zhouchen is very cool. And he himself thought that something was wrong, that Moon Yu was not as simple as he seemed, because it was impossible that an arrow of simple crystals would fight him. Then Jochen decided to ask Moon Yu if he was really on the level of simple crystals. He asked what he meant because his data was listed in the information about the enemy. Then Moon Yu told him directly that he was not on the level of simple crystals and that he was attacking. With lightning speed, Moon Yu rushed to the next one. Zhou Chen was immediately on the alert because he saw how fast his enemy was moving. Mun Yu launched a very rapid and assertive attack. He struck dozens of blows at an incredible pace. In an instant, that battle turned into colored ribbons flying at lightning speed and instant flashes of lightning and sparks. Zhou Chen said that the enemy even managed to force him to use the 18 steps of the sky demon technique. They danced in battle and Mun Yu said that his technique was really strong, but he had not yet shown himself. After that, Zhou Chen continued the fight and said that they were definitely different in strength, but he was much stronger. Zhou Chen decided to show him the next even stronger technique. But Mun Yu also used the wild sword technique, and this went on for a while. They just fought fiercely with swords. For ordinary people, it looked like this because they did not have the skills to see what was happening there. In an instant, Jochen jumped to the side. He was ready to change his skill and technique because he was sure that he was stronger. Monyu also jumped to the side. He was studying his opponent. He was also far from showing his full strength. Yukin even began to smile. He said that he was even quite happy. And in that case, let Pedro not pay him that debt. Monyu said that he would be interested in spending time with him. In the city center, 
The big screen was broadcasting that majestic battle, and all the people were delighted. That girl looked at me carefully and said that it just so happens that Moon Yu is very cool. But the girl was confused whether she should like him more because she also loved Zhu Chen's extraordinary technique. She needed more information about that Moon Yu. Meanwhile, the battle continued and Moon Yu missed one very powerful blow to the shoulder. He began to feel that he was really winning, so he said that Moon Yu's special talents had not helped him and would not help him. Moon Yu said that he would bet that he had some special secrets. In a second, he made another attack and prepared a plan. Because this guy is not called one of the ten best for nothing, because he was able to withstand a three-sided reception, so he prepared for a six-sided reception. Jochen was able to dodge the hit, and Munyu said it was the fourth level. Of course, he dodged easily, but he noticed that the strength of the hundred's attack was noticeably stronger. Munyu was looking for where he had gone because he needed to finish his attacks. In an instant, he spotted him and was already in front of him and ready to strike. Jochen did not expect such speed. He didn't have time to duck, so he had to deflect that blow, and Munyu said it was already the fifth level. Jechen sharply rearranged and made a counterattack. He said that Moon Yu was quite stubborn. But Moon Yu didn't fly away from that blow at all. He held on to the same position. He noticed this, and it shocked him very much because he struck him quite hard. And Liun Yu completed his own technique with a majestic blow. The explosion was very large, and he shouted that it was the sixth level. He still managed to avoid being hit again, but he clearly heard Lun Yu say the sixth level. But when he looked up, he was horrified by what he saw. Liun Yu was surrounded by a special aura, and Zhen Zhen thought that this aura scared him very much. He thought that this could not happen because he could not control such forces at that level. At that moment, Mun Yu was preparing a super attack, and Zhen was thinking, what six levels? And how could he get so much stronger in such a short time? At that moment, he realized that Moon Yu was just accumulating the previous attacks, and also all the attacks that Zhen Zhen had made also had a certain effect. All those actions served as a great charge of strength for the attack that is about to take place. At that moment, he was really scared and said that he had no way out. A super powerful energy burst from Moon Yu's sword, the strongest in his arsenal at the time. She was flying at him at breakneck speed, and he said that Moon Yu was really surprising him. He realized that the fight would be over in one attack. He also makes one last attack in which he puts all the power he has left. He shouted that he had used the heavenly dragon demon fist technique. He met Munyu's attack with all his might and stood his ground and did not let that attack destroy him. But in a short time, his own blue aura disappeared in an instant, and it became very difficult for him to keep up with the incredible pressure that was being put on him. At the last moment, he smiled and said that unfortunately he couldn't stand it. Mun Yuya's furious attack went far ahead and destroyed everything in its path. All the spectators who watched that fight were simply shocked and amazed at the same time by what happened. And Mun Yu appeared on the screens, he won that wonderful battle. People seemed to go crazy, shouting that how could Zhen Zhen lose to a beginner with simple crystals? Someone was watching these events all the time, especially Mun Yu himself. It was that Jang, his friend, who said that the techniques of the violent sword and initial energy strike were very interesting, and what would Mun Yu show next? A little time passed, and the next battle took place, and it was even more intense than the first. Mun Yu won the battle again. He was confidently moving toward the goal he had set for himself. The system said that he won and could take 98 points of his energy. Mun Yu said that for such a high level, that opponent has a lot of energy. And he also said that Pedro kept looking for opponents. People were glued to their screens. They were amazed. It looks like Mun Yu wants to fight Bi Siun again. The same wild sword technique was used there again. It simply swallowed up the opponent and gave him no chance. They could not believe their own eyes as he defeated everyone. They said that he defeated three of the strongest archers in the same day, so it couldn't be luck. They all wondered where he came from. He sat down a bit and said that he was tired because fighting two masters was not an easy task. When he was just randomly clicking in the menu, he noticed that he had 30,000 Vandu coins in his account, and his Pedros said that it was coins for watching battles. Pedros explained that when the number of subscribers reaches more than 10,000, they are charged for views, and then everyone who wants to watch his fights will have to pay. He said that without realizing it, he had become a star, but that he was done teaching for the day. 
He began the journey because it was not too late to return home, and his parents would be waiting for him. But he received a sudden call from his friend, Leonogie. When he picked up the phone, she shouted, Did he see the new hero named Munyu? He said he saw him and asked her why she was screaming so much. She said how could she not scream because he was very cool and everyone was talking about him. She asked him if it was him because he had similar techniques and names. He began to say that they were completely different and that he was not like them. She said that she also thought that it was not him, but everyone around her thought differently. And Liun Yu thought that he needed to come up with something. In an instant, she started talking nonsense saying that he was a member of an ancient sect, that Munyu was his brother, and that their entire family had the violent sword technique. She went on to say that it was no wonder why the two of them were so cool, because their kind is quite terrible, even though they sit quieter than water and lower than grass. In a moment he realized that the nonsense she said was very useful for him because he really had no patron, which meant the options with the secret sect of the secret world, so he would avoid many problems. In an instant, he said that everything was correct, and that Munyu was his brother, and he was revealing all the cards. He said that he had told that secret only to him, and that she would not tell anyone. She said she would keep his secret. She was happy, because he had told her only, and why did she feel so happy? Further events developed as follows. Munyu, whose name was invented by Liunyu, invented his own secret sect in which he was a member. Liunui also justified his own power by saying that he was Munyu's brother and that they had studied together in a secret sect. Later, he created a third character, Lifen, to confuse people even more. And then Liunyu himself fought with his own doubles. It was a mega spectacle. And since the three appeared on the scene at the same time, Lung Yu himself was no longer under the constant sights of rumors and speculation. But news about the secret sect appeared from time to time, and the web and people went crazy for the mystery. He was walking through the streets of a virtual cyberpunk city when he received a call from Leonogie, who asked him if he knew that everyone was talking about him and his brother again. He said that since everyone had already found out there was no point in worrying, she also said that when Moon Yu defeated Tan Zhouche, he never fought anyone else from that moment on, and that day in the morning he had not yet gone online at all, she thought his brother should be careful. He told his friend that he would warn his brother, and he thought that the guy was always challenging Moon Yu to a fight, but Moon Yu kept refusing to fight. He hoped that the guy had calmed down, but at one point he had to hang up because he noticed something. He sneaked around the people and was surprised by the picture he saw. It was his store and his real-life girlfriend worked there, and he noticed that one man was courting her and another wanted to sell black crystals to that store. At that moment, he interrupted the conversation and said that the store would close soon and that they should come back tomorrow for business. The men said that the lady had almost agreed to their proposals. Leonui said that he left the store to her and thought she could handle it, but she created a lot of problems. She began to apologize, but he said it was not her fault. He said he didn't think she would be so popular in the virtual world. He said they also brought black crystals. Probably that man is from a rich family. He is waiting for her to marry well and live like a princess. But she said she didn't want that. She just wanted to live with her mom and dad. He then asked her if she had prepared the crystals he had asked for. She said that everything was ready. But why did he need a crystal worth so much? He thought that the amount was large, but there was still very little space in the starry world and it cost him even more than his house. In a moment, he received a call from his friend, Angie, who said that they needed his help. He said that Liun Yu should go to the Wendu arena, and he did not explain anything else. He took the case and started to run. He said that his sister should tell his mother that he would not come back for dinner. Meanwhile, that girl joined that team and also said how bad those who insulted them were. The thug told them not to think that they had learned a couple of techniques and were already heroes, because they couldn't even handle a Class A group. They just gave them the middle finger and got angry. After a moment, they told Zhang to give them a couple of nice words, but he said that they really wouldn't beat the A-ranked group. Some of them said that without Sister Shuang, their team was a complete mess. The girl told the bastards to cover their faces because their main trump card was about to appear. It was Liun Yu who showed up. He said that as soon as he was gone, they immediately got into trouble. 
He said that Sister Shuang had been gone only a few days and they could not give her any peace. That girl was barely holding on, and when she saw Liun Yu, she started posturing and complaining that those bastards were insulting them. They were immediately glad that he had come, for he was their only hope. Leung Yu said that he did not say he would fight, but that the guy with the glasses asked him to help them take revenge. Liu Nui said that Zhang himself said that those guys had a very high level and that they were very difficult to beat. They began to say that Zhang himself was strange that day, as if he did not want to fight, or even as if he had lost on purpose. Lun Yu immediately recognized the phrase that he was a magician on purpose to lose. Those brazen men started talking about whether those weaklings would attack, because if not, they wouldn't waste their time with them. But suddenly someone said that he was betting a hundred thousand crystals that Liun Yu's team would win. When those enemies heard that, they said that if they had more men, they would also take one. The guy said they didn't care and could take anyone they wanted. Then that thug said that everything was fine and called their friend. He said that those weaklings were now trapped. He came out and said that he was very grateful that they had taken him to such a wonderful battle. The whole team of Liu Nui was shocked at who appeared before them. Zhang was behaving very strangely all the time, and I wondered if he was up to something. The guy said that it was not interesting to bet only a hundred thousand crystals. Lung Yu looked at him carefully, and the guy said, Don't they want to raise the bet? Liun Yu thought that a very strange and suspicious situation was developing, because it was the same Zhou Chen who had been defeated as if he were his brother. He began to apologize to the team for his friends being rather rude to them, but they did all this to lure Lun Yu to the arena. Did Liun Yu immediately say that he was not going to fight them, and did Zhou Chen tell him not to say that because he needed a new sword? But if he agrees to fight him, the sword will be his. The girl said that it was a snowfrost sword it was very rare because the one with the glasses had never even heard of it. She told me that the sword was forged from an icy raven mineral from Tibet, and although it was a Class B sword, its potential was limitless, and if the appropriate runes were engraved on it, it would become a Class A sword, and if the warrior's soul was tempered into it, the sword would rise even higher in rank. Suddenly, Zhang began to say that the sword was certainly very unique, but they had nothing to give in return, so they apologized. That Zhouchen said that whether they win or lose, that sword would be theirs, but if he won. So Liun Yu asked him if he wanted to meet his brother Mun Yu. Zouken said that he likes to deal with intelligent people. Liun Yu himself thought that Zhouchen, who was very clever, had lured him there and made such conditions that he could not refuse them. So Liun Yu thought for a second and said that he agreed to such conditions. After a while, information appeared on all banners and screens that there would be a battle between Liun Yu and Zhen. People were delighted. They said it was the best event they had ever seen, and they were amazed at the stakes, that a sword worth ten million was at stake. People could not understand why Zhen Zhen challenged Liun Yu to a fight because he did not defeat him, but his brother did not accept challenges to fight. In a moment, a giant island appeared in front of them, and the countdown to the start of the battle began, with ten seconds left. Leonui said that the arena was so big, a whole island with a rainforest. Zhang smiled and said that this was really the first time that Leonui was participating in a group battle. He must still be very nervous. He said that he was feeling more uplifted than ever, but that Zakin should be his. Chdan told him to take it for himself, because they would not be able to handle it anyway. In an instant, the battle began, and they all simultaneously began to jump on the trees to close the distance. Leung Yu took out his bow and thought that the crows would show what they could do. When Zhang noticed him, he asked when Liun Yu learned to use a bow. Leung Yu thought that he really didn't know how to use it. He had completely forgotten about it. He mentally turned to the system and asked it what he could learn very quickly now. She said that now he could learn the lunar eclipse technique. He immediately agreed to it. His friends were shocked, because in an instant, Leung Yu simply stopped responding to them and moving. Zhang figured he had passed out. At the same moment, large silhouettes began to approach very quickly in the distance. Zhang said that someone will be approaching them very quickly, and they all need to get ready. Zhang told Li Jin to stay near Lun Yu while he's offline and to protect him. But at that very moment, Liu Yu abruptly opened his eyes and he was ready to fight.
Leonui immediately jumped up the mountain and made a beautiful flip. Zhang was surprised that he restarted so quickly. And at the very moment when Lun Yu was in the air, he used his bow and pulled a huge arrow. All the people watching were shocked because they knew he was fighting with swords. But they also noticed that he was already preparing to attack, but their enemies were a thousand meters away. In an instant, he shot seven arrows at once. People were amazed and said that it was no wonder he was from the L.I. family. One of the enemies noticed that those arrows were flying at him. He stopped to predict their trajectory and dodge. The moment of truth, they were all very close and they had different movements, and it was quite difficult to dodge them. In a moment, he raised his arms and legs and thought that in this way he would avoid being hit, and miraculously, it happened. That guy was amazed that he was okay, and that he didn't have a single scratch on him. It was super lucky. All the people started shouting that he was a Mazila, that he was a very bad shot, and that he should take a sword and fight him. At that very second, Leonui said that he was activating the Lunar Eclipse Reception. It turns out that those arrows hit the tree on the backside, and a special ritual was performed there. And in a second, a huge blue wolf appeared from that portal, rapidly approaching. That boy's scream was heard throughout the island. That wolf was just mocking him. People were also amazed at the cruelty of that method and the insidiousness of it. The bearded guy said that their comrade had been killed in action, and Zhen Zhen was surprised to hear that the guy's bow could shoot so far. In a moment, another arrow flew by, hitting a tree and a little bit of another boy. Zotzian shouted to him and asked how he was if he was wounded. He said that he was fine and it was just a scratch, but at that moment something was already flying at him. It was incredible, but it was a very strange and strong crow. It just picked him up and flew up the mountain with him. She was flying quite high, and the guy was screaming what the hell was going on and begging her to just let him go. And as soon as the raven let him go, a lightning arrow instantly destroyed him. Liun Yu enjoyed the process. He got the hang of it and became an archer. He liked it very much, and only three of their opponents remained. Those crows were very formidable and strong, and their mere appearance was terrifying. When people noticed those crows closer, they were horrified, because they had only seen such creatures in books. As Liun Yu launched another enchanted arrow, people said, Weren't those magic crows sealed by the King of Destruction? Another target of Lun Yu's was running away from him. He was shouting that he had already delivered to attack them at such a distance. He was saying that they needed to get as close to the archer as quickly as possible. But in a moment that huge arrow hit him in the leg, he screamed in pain. He said pitifully that they could not get to him, because they were just targets for him within the range of his shooting. And in an instant, that purple arrow just tore him to pieces. Only the two of them remained, and they were even quite frightened. They could not let an arrow hit them, because the blood would attract crows. They understood this, but it was very difficult to do it. But in a moment, he looked up and noticed that dozens of arrows were flying at them. He clenched his teeth and took up his great sword. He wants to fight those arrows. In a moment, he made several very quick strokes, and all the arrows were destroyed, and he shouted that he should not be underestimated. He said that he would not run any further, because they could not hide anyway, and it was better to challenge them. Then Zalkin agreed with him and said that his cook should cover him, and he would try to slowly sneak in. But just as they were making up their minds, an arrow hit the guy's head. That Dapan was destroyed, and Zhen Zhen was shocked. It was very unexpected. Leonui stood on top of the tree and said that he had destroyed another one. And there is only one Tanzokin left. He is set for a very interesting battle. He looked back and noticed that his friends were very upset, bored, and said that had Lun Yu forgotten that this was a team battle. But suddenly there was a very loud explosion, and an extraordinary explosion occurred in a nearby tree near Lunui. Leon Yu was surprised. He asked if it was a strike of golden crystals. In an instant, that same Zhou Chen was in front of Leong Yu. He said that he had found him. Leong Yu noticed that his opponent had new things on his hands, and he asked how he was able to break through to the next level. He said it was, and he even wanted to use them at first, to fend off the attacks of the violent sword Lu Nui. But when they met at close range, he said he would definitely need them. In a second, Liu Nui started running down to the bottom to launch a surprise attack. He jumped sharply into the distance and at the same moment shot several arrows. Thanks to the new belts on his arms, he was able to create a protective barrier and repel that attack. Lung Yu was impressed, but he was curious what he could do against the crows. 
he said that he was tired of those birds and would just grind them into powder. In an instant, he began to scream for his violent beast to come out, and at that moment, yellow energy began to come out of his mouth. Leonwai himself was very surprised by what was happening there and what would happen next. They were also shocked and didn't understand what the hell it was. They thought they were going to be blown away by that stream of energy. He was screaming because his body was restructuring, and Zhang began to realize that it might be something incredible. Most likely, this is the soul of a warrior, a very powerful force with great potential. Did Liun Yu say that this is the soul of a warrior? He said it looks really cool. The clothes he was wearing were torn, and he was visibly changed. In an instant, with lightning speed, he rushed to attack. He was mega fast, and his strength was incredible. At one point, the warrior spirit that he possessed appeared there, and he easily caught one crow. That Jacquin stood there, and a huge beast stood above him. Its strength was very powerful. It easily caught the raven and crushed it. He was very focused and confident that he had more power than his opponent. Leung Yu saw that he could do nothing against that warrior spirit, and his crows were running out too. After that, Lung Yu asked the King of Destruction if he could hear him and if he had seen the guy he was fighting. The king looked down and said that it was a violent beast and not worth a toe. But Liun Yu said that the beast could easily destroy even crows. The king laughed and said that it was ridiculous because how much power does he think he got from him? Lung Yu said it didn't matter, but he needed more. The spirit said that this would not work because if he wanted more, he would have to exchange something. Liung Yu immediately understood and sharply ordered the system to use all its internal strength to break the seal that was holding the king back. The spirit said in surprise that a lot of power had accumulated during that time, and Liun Yu asked about the seal whether it had broken. Liun Yu was surprised when the king said that it was still far from complete destruction of the seal. Now the king said that he could give him more power and let him prepare to accept it, and when that power hit him, it was as if he was electrocuted. Meanwhile, Yosef was very quickly and abruptly finishing up with those crows. A few more moments passed, and all three crows were defeated. He considered himself very strong at that moment. After that, he and Lung Yu met eyes, and Lung Yu said that those crows were very interesting creatures. And in a moment, more crows began to fly out from behind Lung Yu's back, and he gave them an order to tear up the enemy, and he has many more such crows. Those new crows were noticeably faster and stronger, and Jutsu Jutsim was really confused the moment they appeared. This time, he simply began to strike very rapidly and chaotically, because he could not predict the trajectory of so many enemies. This tactic yielded certain results, and he began to kill crows. It was a rather difficult stage of the battle, but he almost passed it. Lung Yu was amazed. He thought that the new crows would be able to break through the spirit's veil, and a turning point would occur but now he was wondering what to do next. At that moment, the king told him that he would take care of the enemy himself. In an instant, the destroyed raven began to glow and abruptly began to fly to some place. In a few seconds, all the destroyed crows started flocking to one spot and something started to appear there. Zakin was shocked by the tricks that Lonwi was doing. He was very impressed. The golden light he saw, he immediately thought, was the power of golden crystals? In a moment, a huge warrior spirit appeared in front of him, made of yellow energy and with wings. People were simply amazed by what they saw. They did not know exactly what it was, but it was very big. They would ask each other what level of battle they were watching. And others would say that in that Li family, that Liun Yu was definitely the strongest. Ling Yu was amazed by the size. He said that he was even bigger than that violent spirit of animals. That great spirit said that some little wild beast would decide to stand in his way. When the beast noticed who appeared before him, he immediately began to tremble with fear. Liun Yu just stood back and did nothing, and that spirit said to him to watch and enjoy. A mega technique began to emerge in his hand, and he told Lunui to watch as he led him to victory. The audience was at its peak, shouting that this was the decisive moment of the battle. At that moment, a special sphere of energy was formed in the hand of that majestic spirit, and in it was the silhouette of a raven. The scale of that attack was on a completely different level than the original crows that attacked Jachenya. So he just fell into a stupor and could not help himself. At the last moment, he said that he probably lost that time for sure. 
A few minutes passed and the winning team was shown on all monitors in the virtual world. People were shocked because it was a team battle, but the other team members did not score a single point because Liu Nui fought alone against everyone. At that place, Leung Yu sighed with relief that he had won and thanked the king to the raven. The raven told him to call him simply king. Suddenly, that girl jumped on him and began to praise him, saying how cool he was. When the whole team arrived, Zhang said that the bow he had taken from the treasury must have been very strong. Lunui replied that he was just lucky. They started moving and Zhang added that he should use it wisely because it would help him improve a lot. Lung Yu listened attentively and began to think that Zhang was on to something. During the customs, he appeared in the house and said that he had not returned to reality for a very long time. Suddenly, he received a message that he had gotten quite a few points that time, 169 points of emptiness, and they could be used to create a starry world. He saw it as if the system was trying to rob him again, and he said that he had nothing left anyway. Suddenly, there was a knock at his door, and someone told him to open the door. It was Xiao Qiang. He asked him what happened, because they had just seen each other in the virtual world, he said. He said that he had just passed by the pass office and thought that someone was looking for him, and that it was probably Tan Zhoshin. Lenui thought it was him again. What could he want? He was standing at the entrance and suddenly heard a voice saying that a handsome man was standing there. Liunyu would come down and say that he was really waiting for him, and that he missed him so much that he couldn't leave him alone, even for a hair's breadth. Without emotion, he told Liunyu to take his reward, the Sword of Snowfrost. Liunyu remarked that he was keeping his word, and Tang Jokin said that the case was made of thousand-year-old white frost jasper and could hold weapons. Liunyu asked him if he had really set up the whole thing and laid down the sword just to see him. He apologized for taking advantage of his friends, but he could not calm down. After that last battle, he really wanted to learn that majestic sword technique. Liunyu thought that he was sure to lose, and it changed him greatly. He turned around and said that he had now admitted his own defeat and would no longer be bothered by Lun Yu. Lung Yu thought that Tang Zhouchen looked very depressed, and if he could not overcome that state, he would remain at that level forever. So he realized that he was not a bad guy in general. Then Liun Yu called him, and he immediately turned around and waited for Liun Yu to say something. He said that he would fight him again, but this time he would use the violent sword technique. In an instant, he changed and became cheerful. He couldn't believe that Liun Yu was saying such a thing. In a moment, people gathered around them, commenting on what was about to happen and wondering who would win this time. Tang Jiaxin said there are so many people there, and does Liun Yu really want to fight in the real world? But he said there was nothing to worry about because he had this thing. He immediately threw this barrier on the ground so that it could start working. That special barrier appeared, and Lung Yu told them to enter it, and they would be the only two there. People wondered why they needed that protective barrier. She told them not to go there. They were outraged, because this way they would not be able to see anything. A whole hour had passed, but the barrier was still standing and no sounds were heard from it. But in a moment, one of his legs appeared. People were shocked, because the two of them came out of that barrier at the same time, and they were both very badly injured. Lun Yu said, smiling, that in reality, Tang Zhou Chen fights much more interestingly. He did not know that he could do this. He was able to reveal himself from a different angle. When they passed, people asked who won that battle. Leung said that they would never know who won that battle. The two of them sat down on the catcher's mantle. And Liun Yu said that shouldn't he be rewarded for having endured so long in the battle against Zhou Chen? But Zhou Chen said that he was a very good fighter himself. Liung Yu began to joke that his new friend knows that upgrading a snow sword is very expensive, and he knows that the Tang family is very rich. Tan Zhoken told him to stop blackmailing him, because why should he give him money? After that, Tan Zhoken advised Lun Yu to try his luck in the Tower of Triumph. He started telling me that the tower had been built for ten years and had ten floors. He also said that all the power of the Archer's Union was gathered in that tower, and that to get in, you had to defeat the monster Veda. And then, the monster became stronger on each floor. Lung Yu was impressed. He said it was like a game, where he gets a tower medal for winning and then exchanges it for a prize. Tan Zoshin stood up and said that it was up to him to take it from here, because he had told him how he could become rich. He thought that as soon as he had the time, he would have to try it. At that moment, 
The director of his corps was passing by, and he asked why Yun Yu was sitting there so beaten up. Did he have another fight with someone? He said that in a few days, the castle of the heavenly clouds would go to the demon bull field and fight there for one month. He advised that Liun Yu should practice during that time and collect useful data. He also noted that Liun Yu was talented and that it would be a pity if he missed this opportunity. Three days passed and Liun Yu went to the library to get more knowledge. He was besieged by mountains of ice and began to search for information with an intelligent expression on his face. But a little time passed and he realized that he could not understand anything at all. But he pulled himself together and said that even if he didn't understand, he had to try. Because Tanzokin had told him the information for a reason. Tanzokin gave him a map with special information, showing the entrances and exits, he said. That he had heard that the entrances were mainly located in the demon bull field, on the devil's mountain, in the dark zones. He had heard that Leonui would go there so he would need them. Leon Yu was confused, asking what kind of map it was and why he could not understand it. Tan Jokin said that it was a very ancient map with ancient inscriptions, and it was up to him to understand it. In the library, Leon Yu had already learned that it was 138,000 kilometers from the Devil's Mountain to the field of the Demon Bull. Suddenly a girl stood in front of him and said that the Devil's Mountain was a very ancient area filled with monsters. It was Leonodje, and she asked him why he was not looking for information about the demon bullfield, but was stuck to that very dangerous mountain. He stood up and said that he had just heard about the place and was very interested, but she started to get angry and said that she did not believe him. She started shouting at him that he didn't even know if there was danger there, and Leon Yu asked her to be quiet because it was a library. She began to say that even if he had a secret defense technique and was a member of a secret sect, there was still a very great danger. She was so worried that she almost started to cry. She said it was not a place where you could go. You can't just come and go from there. He patted her head and said that he understood. He began to wipe her tears and said that he was always making her worry. He apologized to her for being such a fool who likes to take risks. He said that it must be really dangerous there if she was so excited. But he said that in that world, things are such that even if there is danger, you still need to do things. Lung Yu smiled and said that no matter what happens, he will come back miraculously for her sake. He swore to her that he would, but she turned her head sharply and began to say that she didn't care whether he came back or not, and especially not for her sake. And Leong Yu said that in that case, they would count it as a smile because she had a very beautiful smile. Suddenly, she told him to stop shaming her and said that if there was any business to be done, he should tell her. Meanwhile, his friends spied on him and said that he was a very popular dear friend of theirs. After a conversation with his girlfriend, he began to look at the information more closely. Apparently, that place is really very dangerous. A little time passed and Loung went to the registration office, filled out a questionnaire and was told to pay the participation fee. He was very disappointed because he had to pay $500,000 to get in, which he thought was very expensive. If ancient runes were not needed to improve that new sword, it would not have come there at all. He was also a little uncomfortable because there were a lot of strong people there and they all had silver crystals. Just as he started to pay the total amount, one of those girls noticed him. She said that it looked like he was only wearing simple crystals, and Lo Nui asked if he could get a discount. Another girl replied that it was not strange to see people there with simple crystals, which meant that they had special powers. But when that girl noticed him, she thought that even from the back he reminded her of someone very much. Meanwhile, Leon Yu tried to explain that he had earned the money very hard and needed it badly to get a discount. Suddenly, the girl decided to contact him, and he abruptly returned. When he looked closely, he was horrified, as if he had seen a spirit. He turned around and thought, What is that girl he defeated in the arena doing there at the very beginning, and with his ex-girlfriend from high school? She was slowly approaching him, and he thought it was a disaster because the two girls who hated him the most came to the same place together. He had only one thing to do. He stood up abruptly and asked who was calling him. But before that, he shook his own face very hard so that it changed its appearance. When they saw him clearly, the girl was frightened and said that he had a very unusual appearance. 
He asked them if they had called him, but the girl apologized and said she had made a mistake. He started talking to her. Did her mother not tell her that if such a beautiful girl talked to a stranger, she might be stolen? She was very angry and said, how dare he insult her? Does he even know who she is? He started shouting that he didn't care who she was, but if she kept bothering him, he would tear off all her clothes and then sell her in the mountains to marry some jerk. Suddenly, her friend took her away from him and told her to calm down and not to talk to any morons. She thought that the freak was very similar to a certain fool who had made her look like an idiot in the same way. He said that they finally left because his face was already petrified and he could have stayed like that forever. He realized that he could no longer disguise himself like that. Suddenly, he noticed that they were giving away souvenirs for buying a ticket. In an instant, he went to that woman with souvenirs. He looked at that picture on the brochure and was amazed at how much money was invested in that world. After that, he bought a mask in another souvenir shop, and he came up with the idea that he would disguise himself in this way. Suddenly, that girl appeared from behind him, hit him, and asked him why the freak was spinning like that. Could it be that the starry world of the warrior's founder had stupefied him? He turned around and asked her which founder she was talking about. She was shocked because he was dressed as a fish, and she asked why he was dressed like that. She said that she was talking about the founder of the Warriors' Union because he was the first to awaken the power. In that dark era, he became the only ray of humanity. He asked her that he must be over 200 years old and that he was living well. She said that he shouldn't be talking nonsense and, of course, that he was feeling fine. Did she say it was his first time in the tower? If so, he shouldn't underestimate it, because it's very cunning, and you never know what you're going to die from. He was shocked by the last words. She said that the tower was not only 108 floors up, but 108 floors in. She said that people call it the Tower of the Fall, and only those who have received a pass to the dark zones can enter it. He immediately thought of that dark zone because that's where he needed to go. They went inside because they bought a pass, and he said it was a very strange building. She said that in that world there could be nothing stranger than his face. She said that she was leaving, and he should rely on himself. He was really very strange, but now he is alone. He wants to find out why that place is so famous and why only such strong warriors go there. When he entered one of the halls, he was greeted by three pairs of doors. The first was the door for sacred warriors, the second for ordinary warriors, and the third for super warriors, and he had to choose one of them. The system explained to him what he was going for, and he realized that there was an even higher level than the colored crystal, but he could only reach the doors of ordinary warriors. Suddenly he noticed that each of the doors already had its own warrior rating. He looked there and noticed that there were familiar names. He thought it was unbelievable that this madman was already there, so he couldn't lose to him. Suddenly he received an important message from the system saying that he was in a dangerous place and the system was scanning the tower. While he was waiting, he sat down on the ground and thought that everything was very strange because he began to think that it was not the founder who built that tower, but someone else. A little time passed and the system said the scan was complete. It also said that the tower was divided into 33, 33 void spaces. But the next message shocked him. It said that if he died, the tower would take all his energy. He asked again, and the system said that in case of death, all his energy would be taken by the tower owner. He began to think that this was just a training tower, and it was very strange that you could die in it. He figured out that maybe someone was using a prize system to bring the best warriors into the tower and then using their energy to improve the world. But he knows that the founder of that tower is the very first warrior, and here the argument begins because it can't be so. He told the system to scan the entire tower and find where the founder lived. A moment later, the system said it had completed the scan. Leon Yu shouted to her to tell her where he was. The system said that the founder and all the demons of Vedu are in the structure of the tower itself. They are like the tower itself. Leonue said that in that case, the founder is now watching his every move. The system said that the founder had sent his own consciousness into eternity to become a deity of the twelve stars. And now the tower is run by a creature with basic intelligence. 
Leonui thinks that the deity already had seven before he became a deity, so now he only needs five. He doesn't understand how someone who is considered a hero can destroy people in order to become a deity. Lung Yu said it was very disgusting, but if he himself used people, he would also use him. In an instant, the door opened and there was nothing behind it. He was wary and slowly started to enter, and it was very strange to him that no one was there. But at one point, a very loud and insanely scary monster's roar sounded behind him. He turned around very sharply and even got scared. He noticed that there was a trap. That strong monster had already struck him. He didn't have time to duck and just flew backwards. He managed to stop and thought he was almost eaten. They were monster rats with claws, he had heard about them. They say that they are equal in strength to a warrior with simple crystals, but who has achieved maximum skill. Lung Yu said that nine monsters would fight him at once. He was a little shocked, because it was only the first floor. So how many death traps had that madman set? In an instant, those rats all started attacking at the same time to make it even more difficult. He was confident and said he had nothing better to do, so he activated the shadow system. In an instant, the number one shadow appeared there and immediately destroyed one monster. In a split second, she dealt with two monsters, and special points fell from those monsters. He was excited because it was a great chance for him to earn extra points. But right after that, three more monsters were already flying to attack his first shadow. But she dealt with them all with a quick and powerful blow. At the same moment, Shadow Number 2 also destroyed one monster. Lung Yu was cheerful and said it was very good that his shadows learned to fight together. After that, he looked around and said that they were done with that floor and the shadows could return. In an instant, a big thing with a big screen came out of the floor. He read what it said about things that could be exchanged. There were ancient Veda records of frozen ice for a hundred points, records of thunder and lightning for a hundred points, and if you bought it for money, you would need about a million. There were a lot of other skills and a lot of other things. It was all very cool. Now he understood why people go and risk their lives in that tower. But suddenly he saw something there, something special. The list included the blood of a shadow fairy, which could be exchanged for 2,500 points. He recalled that he had already encountered one of the components earlier when he had to open the box and release the seeds. Then the system said that he had received the seeds of a shadow artifact. He didn't attach much importance to it at the time, because in order for that seed to grow, he needed to water it with the blood of a shadow fairy, and then he would be able to get the artifact. Then he accepted the fact that it was very difficult to find that fairy, because she was an extremely rare creature, and he didn't think about it anymore. He was amazed that you could buy such a rare thing there, and he thought about the fact that he needed points, and he only had ten. Suddenly a message came from the system, telling him not to be appointed and to act within the limits of the power he had and not to be exposed again, he said, that he would be very careful. He got up on the platform and said that it was only the first floor and it probably wouldn't be too hard to walk a few more floors. On the second floor, he and his shadows have already killed 19 demonic monsters. Tower of Triumph, third floor, 29 demon monsters destroyed. In that tower on the fourth floor, 39 demon rats have already been destroyed. Lune loved it. He said that he just accidentally got to the fifth floor without stopping. There he was already met by 49 rats with claws and one general, so Lo Nui thought he needed to try a little harder, so he didn't hesitate to rush into one with his own soldiers. With that general, it was no longer so easy, and we had to stick to tactics. He said that Shadow Number One should attack from the left side. His shadow followed his order as quickly as possible and was ready to attack. But the rat general turned out to be strong and fast enough, so he struck a surprise blow at shadow number one. Leung Yu did not expect that one of his shadows would get hurt and be out of commission for a while. Then he ordered shadow number two to distract the shuriken general with a deceptive attack to force him to use a fire attack. In a moment... Lunui himself was dodging the monster general's attack, and he was saying to Shadow Number One, how long will she lie there, because she has work to do to deal with the little rats. Then Leon Yu decided to change his tactics. He pushed off the ground very hard, and as he flew up into the air, he thought that he needed to change his attacks because close-range attacks are not effective. 
He took his bow and called the King of Destruction for help. It was an eclipse attack. He got behind that rat general and shot that powerful arrow at him. Tastrila instantly turned into a huge beast that was rapidly attacking the monster. In an instant, that beast was able to bite the monster's hand, and the monster was shocked that such a creature was fighting against him. But that wasn't the main feature of that arrow, because Leonui folded his fingers in a special way and said the word explosion. And immediately there was a very loud and powerful explosion. It was all blue, it was a very cunning trick against such a big monster. He landed and immediately coins started falling, he said, that it looked like they were already finished. And those coins kept falling, and he wondered where they came from. Or was it that rat that was so fat? Shadow number one has come to life and finished off the last small monster. Lung Yu started counting how many coins he had now, if he had ten on the first floor and twenty on the second. He was too lazy to count all those coins and decided to move on. Meanwhile, people were wondering where he had gone because he hadn't entered the virtual world for several days. Someone said that he must have lost to Tanjochen and was now afraid to go out in public so that he would not be ashamed. The fans almost started a fight themselves. That girl was ready to destroy anyone for her idol. She said that Lun Yu would easily destroy Tang Zhouchen in real life. But in an instant, their argument was interrupted by a special broadcast. All people paid attention to it, and it said that the general system welcomed Lun Yu from Zhongzhou, a warrior who is at the level of simple crystals. All systems congratulate him on his successful entry to the 10th floor of the Tower of Triumph. People were shocked. How is this possible? How could he reach the 10th level on simple crystals? Meanwhile, in the capital city of Zhongzhou, that guy came and said that he had brought the materials he was asked to bring. That unknown man asked if he was the guy who was conquering the Tower of Triumph. The guy said that it was him, and added that he had heard that the War God Temple had published that Liunui was among the testers. Then an unknown man said that those old men stepped in very quickly. He told his assistant to publish a notice that Leo Nui was now a young star in Zhongzhou City, and that his family had also been granted the right to live in the capital and given a large house. The guy listened to everything in silence and agreed to everything. He would do everything. A message was sent from the Temple of the God of War, and Liu Nyu became theirs. He is the one who tests. He has been qualified as a tester. All the people were amazed at how the big organizations want to lure Leonui away from them. The Temple of the God of War and the Warrior Association compete with each other for Leonui. Ordinary people did not understand how he could be in the Association of Warriors if he had simple crystals. At the same time, a battle was taking place on the 11th floor of the Tower of Triumph. There was already an army of hundreds of rats, then otherworldly rats, and one rat emperor. Lung Yu's shadows helped him with all their might. While his assistants were holding that monster, he started attacking the cotton wool. He said that now he would visit his arrow. He loaded a powerful explosive arrow again and shouted that the rat should be wiped out. An even stronger explosion rang out again and the monster simply dissolved in the heat of the explosion. That time, Liu Yu himself fell from the blast wave, but he was also a little tired. He breathes a sigh of relief because he's won again. But it's getting harder and he realizes that he's going to be completely exhausted soon. Leung Yu thought that he hadn't fought in full force for a long time, and here he was, able to relax and attack to the maximum. He didn't even know what kind of power he had. It turns out that with his shadows, he can defeat enemies with golden crystals. When he went to that dashboard and asked how many coins he had now, he was very surprised that he was paid 300 coins for the Rat King, which is very good, and now he has 2,370 coins in total. Otherwise, it can only mean that he can now buy that thing. It was only the 11th floor, but he no longer needed to collect coins, so it was not very difficult to pass that tower. The system explained to him that since he was at the level of simple crystals, he was given bonus coins for each floor. He hit the share button and said it was a good thing he didn't switch to black crystals. In an instant, that panel shone with a very bright light. It was like a star. It was very unexpected. Liu Nyu immediately took a defensive stance and was ready for someone to attack him because he knew that tower would be treacherous. But when the light went out, there were big scales. It was very strange. Immediately after that, a voice told him to put the coins he had earned on the Magus, and he was amazed because there was also a voiceover. 
He opened the virtual inventory and coins began to fall out of it. And while he was pouring coins, the thing he needed began to appear in another place. It was a special flask with an even more special filling. He said that this was the way to water the shadow. Without waiting a moment, he immediately wanted to accomplish the task for which he had passed all those floors of the tower and began to move into the starry world. When he appeared there, he was shocked and thought he didn't understand how such a big mess came about. He decided that he would no longer throw things into that world. After that, he went in search of the thing he needed to plant it in the ground. In fact, it didn't take long for him to find the thing. He had to bury it and wait for ten seconds. He felt special because it was his own land. All the time is up, now he needs to water that seed. He carefully and gently began to water the mound of earth that contained the seed. And almost instantly, a flower began to sprout from that place. It grew larger with each passing second, and at the end of it, a large bud formed. He was amazed that it all happened so quickly, but he was even more amazed that it seemed to open at that very moment. And so it happened, and within a few seconds, a large stream of light began to break through the cracks. And in an instant, it opened up, and it was just an incredible light, and Lunyu was very frightened and jumped back. That bright light did not last long. He began to say that the flower had just blinded him, and if it continued, he would be blind. The guy gently approached and tried not to make any sudden movements. He asked what was growing. When he looked inside the flower, he was amazed beyond belief. Inside that flower was a little girl, sleeping and snoring a little, and the system congratulated him on the successful birth of a shadow queen. She had a very interesting appearance, and it looks like she had ears like an elf. He was just in awe of how small and cute and beautiful she was. He just wanted to touch her little cheeks. At that moment, he experienced unforgettable sensations. The little queen began to wake up. She was still in a special state and began to stretch like any other person after sleep. As soon as she started to look at him, he approached and touched her with his finger and said hello. He said that his name was Liliunyu and that he was very pleased to meet you. But after a second pause, she started shouting that he was her dad and told him to hug her. It was just an incredible shock for him, as if he had received the strongest blow in the world. He did not understand how she could call him that. He was in a state of shock for quite some time. Did he have such a violent reaction that the Queen of Shadows herself wondered what was going on? He lay on the ground for some time and could not calm his own breathing. His heart seemed to be jumping out of his chest. His life had not prepared him for such a turn of events. But another minute passed, and he realized that the little queen was there alone and he needed to pull himself together. So he went up to her and said that he did not expect that a child would be born from that seed. And from that day on, they would always be together. At his words, she only began to whimper a little, like a normal child. Leonui guessed that she might be hungry, but he had nothing to feed her right now. Her condition was deteriorating, and Leon Yu asked her to wait a little longer so that they could go out into the real world. And in a second, she just started crying. It was like a heartbreak for him. He asked her not to cry and that he, as a father, would think of something. The system gave him a hint that the Shadow Queen feeds on blood and he can feed her with his own blood. It was great because the problem was solved. He gave her the finger and said she could drink as much as she wanted. The queen began the process of absorption without hesitation, and Leon Yu felt strange sensations at that moment. He was happy and thought that for such a beautiful daughter, it was not a pity to lose a little blood, but he thought that she was small and would not drink much. Three minutes passed and his expression changed. Leon Yu began to panic that she was drinking and drinking because even an elephant could not hold such a bloodthirsty person. The system said that his blood quality was too low, and the queen needed to drink more, and Leon Yu said that the system had deceived him. Half an hour passed, and the queen finally stopped drinking blood. She became cheerful and playful, and he was like an old man. He asked if she was sure she was drunk and didn't want to drink anymore, because he thought he was seeing an angel. He began to drink the juice to renew his own blood and thought that he could never have thought that he could die while feeding his child. Suddenly, he felt someone small appear on his neck. It was the queen. She was in a very good mood, and she hugged him. The system said that the queen can move freely in space, 
If she doesn't want to appear, then others won't see her, and Lun Yu said that this is a pretty cool feature. Then the system surprised Lun Yu by saying that the strongest skill of the Shadow Queen is power copying. The system went on to say that the Queen could copy the power of Saint Level Warriors and all lower ones. Did Lun Yu notice that this made her stronger even than him? The system said that she is not actually stronger than him. And since she can copy a force that is greater than her own, he will be able to put as much force into her as he wants. Now he understood everything. While she was playing on the ground, he said that now they had to go. Like a true irresponsible father. He said he would teach her how to fight. A little time passed and they returned to that tower and went up to the next floor. Lung Yu said that on the twelfth floor, the rats ran out and now they have to fight against the feathered witches, of which there are nine. The moment his assistant shouted that she was ready to go on the attack, Lung Yu was amazed at her fighting spirit. The queen jumped to meet those enemies, and Lung Yu wondered what she was going to do. Those monster women started using their special powers. A fierce stream of ice burst from their mouths, which would freeze everything in its path. The shadow queen quickly changed direction and began to run away. Lung Yu shouted at her to run away, or that icy stream would get her. It was a very powerful machine, and Li Yun Yu rushed to it at breakneck speed to save it. At the very last moment, he managed to catch her and save her from death. He breathed a sigh of relief and said that they were very dangerous. He could not even think that they had such power. It's good that the queen is fine. He began to shout at those monsters that how dare they harm other people's children, and now he would show them revenge. He was very outraged by this. He was determined to act sharply and quickly and said that they would all be destroyed now. He told her to wait for him there and he would be back soon. He was seriously angry. In a split second, he flew by her so fast that she didn't even notice him. In an instant, he was already behind the monster and said that it was time for payback. Liun Yu grabbed her wings and began to break them out, saying that his child was very grateful for their care. He tore out the wings of that monster with furious rage and struck it with tremendous force, and it flew down. Those other female birds were a little confused because they did not expect such a fierce fight. Liun Yu turned to them all and told them that they monsters should not underestimate their father's love. The furious battle continued. Another woman, a monster, a bird was destroyed. Every time he destroyed someone, he was given coins, a reward for achievement. The Shadow Queen was delighted to see her father so strong. At that time, the other monsters were angry enough that there were fewer and fewer of them, and after all, they were from the same tribe. In an instant, one of the monsters decided to attack. It started a swift attack. It flapped its wings very quickly, so a special attack appeared. That attack had a very short range, but it was very powerful. Lai Yun Yu felt a fierce force that prevented him from moving. He realized it was a sonic attack. While he was standing still, another monster launched a counterattack. In an instant, a fierce fire shot from the mouth of that monster was hurled at Lun Yu. The Shadow Queen was very frightened when she saw what a powerful attack was unleashed on her father. In an instant, Lun Yu flew out of a large column of smoke. He was wounded, thrown from the explosion itself. When he stopped, he stayed on the ground, thinking that those sound attacks were really pissing him off, and if he couldn't handle them, he wouldn't be able to win that fight. Just a few seconds later, the worst attack of those sound waves was unleashed on him again. He was shocked that she had used it again so quickly. Liun Yu began to try to counteract this powerful and invisible force, but no matter what he did, it did nothing. My daughter watched the situation with terrible regret. It was very hard for her to realize that she could do nothing. In an instant, a turning point occurred in her. She screamed loudly and the energy around her, the power of the forces, obeyed her. The enemies immediately noticed her and stopped attacking Lun Yu nonstop. He was freed, and at the same time very surprised, because those monsters stopped attacking him, because his daughter demonstrated the same attack with which they had chained him to the ground. When he got up, he called her to help him and to fight together. He said that together they are the perfect team, and they will be able to counteract the sound attacks of the enemy monsters. Meanwhile... Half an hour passed, and in that beautiful virtual world, there was a special message. The overall system welcomed Lun Yu from Qin Zhu, whose level arrow was simple crystals with a passage to the 15th floor, the Tower of Triumph. Were people all shocked that he could get so high on the level of simple crystals?
His former best friend also listened to the news on the radio and was very happy that his friend was doing well. Also, the teacher who taught him at the university in the city of Happy Wind. He also heard the news and said that his student had already shouted to the whole world who he was. It's great that he became so famous, but isn't it too soon? Also somewhere in a secret place, the girl said with surprise that it was really the 15th floor. It was Shuang's sister, and she said that she couldn't wait to have a practice fight with him. Also in the Tang family home, was he very surprised that the guy was able to get to that floor so quickly? Tan Zhoken told Lei Yu to wait for him because he would not lose to him easily. Meanwhile, in the courtyard of the Cloudy Sky University, a man with an iron hand was apologizing. This was the assassin who was sent to kill Lei Yunui during the general competition. Some man said that he did not expect that guy to be so strong and he would definitely become the new star of the University of the Happy Wind and a threat to them. That guy was desperate. He was asking what to do now because that guy is so high up now and he's so strong now that it's hard to destroy him quietly. The man said that he could not comprehend the fact that he had reached the 15th level of the tower on the level of mere crystals. But if the blood of a holy warrior flows in him, then this explains everything. Did the guy ask in surprise? And the man said that it was necessary to spread the word that the blood of a holy warrior flows in Lunyu, and the more people who know about it, the better. Then the boy realized everything and said that his master was very cunning. And it is with this act that they will succeed in crushing Lun Yu into powder. Meanwhile, he walked a little uncertainly near the destroyed monsters. He was quite tired and said that he finally managed to get to the 20th floor. He immediately remembered that those who reach the 20th level are automatically included in the leaderboard, and he asked the system if he was right. The system said that he could hide the number of levels he had completed so that his rating would not be displayed. He told her, why hadn't she told him that before? Meanwhile, the Shadow Queen was resting. He began to press the buttons and said that he would rather hide his name from the lists because he did not want to stand out, because he had already achieved a triumph. He was calmer that he could continue to fight and not worry about extra attention. Meanwhile, people were talking about him all the time, saying that he had definitely made it to the 20th floor because his name appeared on the list of leaders. Others said that for the first time since the tower was created, someone managed to squeeze into the leaderboard. But right after a moment, his name disappeared. He asked how this could happen, because it had just been there. They began to speculate whether he might have died, but one of them said that he could not have died so quickly. Most likely, he had hidden his own rating, because strong people often hide things. The man also said that he had just received a message that the blood of a holy warrior flows in that boy Lunyu. Then those people said that now they were not surprised that his skill was growing so fast and strong. At that moment, some other man heard the news, and he was shocked by the news, and thought that he needed to return to the clan as soon as possible and inform his family of the news. Meanwhile, Leung Yu came out of that tower and said that he had been in that tower for a very long time. He was happy because the air outside the tower was much more pleasant. And he was also very pleased with what he managed to take out of that tower, a very valuable crop. In an instant, people began to recognize him. They said that he was constantly hiding the rating and no one knew how many times he had been in that tower and what floor he had reached. But judging by his backpack, he had definitely reached the 40th floor. Also, when he was passing by, he heard people saying that they heard that he had the blood of a sage. He wondered whether he was imagining it or whether everyone was really discussing something about him and looking at him intently. Meanwhile, other people also noticed that Li Yun Yu had disappeared from the rankings, with one saying that he thought he had died. It was Chu Qin Yan. He was the son of the mayor of Tang Yang. He said that he could not die because he was a young master waiting for him. The girl's name was Chun Yun. She was the mayor's foster child and she said that her father had always worked for the good of the city, and his son had always just whined. They were standing near a special exit and waiting for him there, and in a moment he said that someone else was coming out. Leung Yu was frustrated because he was very annoyed with the cost of having too many items in his inventory. As soon as he looked up, he was shocked, because that girl was walking toward him, and it was loud and clear, addressing him. In a split second, he pulled on the fish mask and started asking why he was there because he knows he is incredible, but he doesn't have to run after him like a dog. 
She told him very menacingly to shut his mouth and stop talking nonsense. She came up to him and told him not to fool around because she knew for sure that he was Liyun Yu. She told him not to worry, that she would not touch him because that day she had orders to take him to the mayor's mansion. At that moment, the mayor's son said, Is that fool really Liyun Yu? But Liyun Yu sharply replied that he was the fool, like his whole stupid family. An argument started between them, and the mayor's son asked if Liyun Yu knew who he was, because if he said that again, he would destroy him. And Liyun Yu repeated that he was a fool and told him to get on with what he was threatening him with. The girl took that brother and told him to go with them. But he said that he had no desire to go anywhere with them, because they were strangers and he did not know what they wanted to do. But then he received a notification of an incoming call. It was his girlfriend. She was crying and saying that she was sure that he had already been killed in the tower. And here he was, alive and well. Lung Yu was confused. He asked why she was crying and how she knew he was in the tower. Suddenly, someone said that the whole world knew he was in the tower. Liu Yu was immediately very wary when he heard that the whole world knew. And that girl came up to the screen and said hello to her friend. Leonui's friend greeted an old acquaintance and asked her why she was with Leonui, while Liunyu himself was surprised by such impudence. Because he had not yet finished speaking, she began to answer that her father had asked her to take him to the estate, but he did not seem to be very happy about the proposal. He said that he did not want to go, but she told him not to worry because that girl was her best friend and she would not harm him. She began to cry and ask him to come with her, and Liun Yu agreed and began to ask her to stop crying. Then Liun Yu said, He said that he agreed and that he would let that beautiful girl lead him. But she got angry and told him that she had already told him not to call her that. The guy also began to forgive Liun Yu for calming down and behaving normally, and he thought very strongly that this son annoyed him very much. A little time passed and they came to a large and beautiful house. Lanui said that that house was perfect for someone who runs a heavenly city, and the girl said if he wanted, he could borrow a couple of ideas to decorate his personal mansion in Qinglong. Leung Yu stood there and was just completely confused. What did that girl just say? And she was no less confused that he didn't know anything because he was in the tower. He said that the royal capital had given him a title, and that in the future, he would need to join the group of the Temple of War. 2231. He was shocked and asked him if he was really famous, because he had deliberately hidden his own rating to prevent this from happening. But suddenly she said she had some bad news. She said that now everyone in the outside world knows that the blood of a holy warrior flows in his veins. Liun Yu testified that he knew nothing about such things. She was simply amazed at how ignorant he was and that he did not even know about such things as the blood of a saint. She said that a holy warrior is the highest degree of development of a ruler's spiritual and physical strength, and that the direct descendants of those who participated in the holy war often have a powerful lineage called sacred blood or sage blood. The better the pedigree, the greater the chance of being ordained. So she added that now the most powerful in the world wanted to kill him. Liun Yu was shocked and said that his father was a factory manager. What kind of sacred blood and lineage is she talking about? She said that it was not for him to decide whether he had blood in his veins, and they entered a room. There were several people in that room, and immediately one of them said that he wanted to sign a contract with him. The first man bore the title Descendant of the Celestial City. The second was a girl, and she was called the Rain Lady. Then there was a man called the Heavenly Dragon. After him came another man this time called the Heavenly Rebel. And it was a Western commander. He said that it was Leung Yu from their mayor of Lejeune. They had been waiting for him to come for a very long time. He threw the bag on the table and immediately said that if those people had something to say to him, they should speak right now. He added that they did not waste each other's time. Let those people tell it like it is because he already had a lot to do. The commander said that it was very good that Leung Yu was the one who deserved the title he was given. He began to explain that he had heard that the city's ruler and the head of the guilds were two opposing forces, equal in strength and capabilities, so there were always various escalations between them, but they both maintained a delicate balance within the city. 
Leung Yu said that it would be ironic because no matter how many generations change, the object of the struggle is always a person, which is very ironic for him. The man went on to say that lately the situation has been getting out of control because the already very weak balance will soon be upset. So they invited him. He went on to say that he really hoped that the Lee sect to which he belonged would not mind you joining the city faction. The commander said that as long as the Lee sect cooperated with them, they promised to support and protect them. Lunui thought that he had been working towards his own goal for a very long time to become someone's servant like this. So he said that he apologized, but he could not accept their offer. Suddenly, someone started talking to him, saying that he was trash and did he realize where he was. Liun Yu started to answer that those people probably forgot that he was a member of the Li family and that if he needed protection, his family would take very good care of him. He thought that if his sect joined a faction, wouldn't that mean that it was very weak on its own? Then, the heavenly rebel said that he could offer him ten chits, and Lu Nui ironically said that the most important thing their family lacked was chits. Then, the other members, seeing that Lu Nui was not interested, began to say that they could send the Acropolis to the Li sect. Then, the girl he came with said that those people really want to make concessions. She said that they put forward counter conditions that all tax revenues would belong to the Lee family and should not be related to the heavenly city in any way. Liu Yu turned around and looked at her, and she said that this was the best they could do. One of the elite was getting more and more surprised by what was happening there, and the girl said that she could guess that the elite group had their own plans if they were offering such conditions. In an instant, Leung Yu realized that the woman who called herself the mayor's daughter wanted to make sure that he would be given his own city and that he would have a steady stream of money. In general, the whole picture made him think that only those six people run the whole city, which means that the mayor is a fictitious person and a fake. At that moment, one of the elites said that such a proposal was very interesting. But the guy with whom Lunui came slammed his hand on the table and told everyone to stop. He began to tell Lung Yu that he had put up with his insolence for long enough, and did Lung Yu realize who he was talking to? Lung Yu told him to take a closer look at himself, and then he would be surprised. He was shocked and, through anger, began to ask who he thought he was, and that he had definitely lost his way. At that very moment, the other people who were there began to approach Liun Yu and shouted for him to come to them. He turned around and realized that they wanted to surround him. That girl was shouting at Tsutsinyan. What was he doing and what was he up to? He said that since the boy was so disinterested and did not want to voluntarily cooperate with the heavenly city, they will simply transport him to a neutral territory and hand him over to the clan that rules there in exchange for their kindness. In a moment, the first blow was delivered to my face. It was very unexpected. From that blow, the enemy made a couple of rolls backwards and screamed like a girl. Those guards immediately began to say that this was too much, because they were told that their opponent was a simple kid from the Lidzen gang. Then the guard looked at him and said that there are no ordinary children of such strength. In an instant, one of the elite began to say that they were all jerks and what was the point of judging his strength by one punch. She continued that he had never met an opponent of a higher level, and that perhaps all his strength had already been exhausted after one blow, for even someone with the blood of a sage has limitations. Then that evil guy started shouting at the guards that they were cowards, because there were many of them and he was alone, and they could do nothing to him. Immediately after he said that, one of them tried to attack from behind, but he failed and Liun Yu bowed down. But he didn't just bow down, he immediately began to perform a special maneuver. He caught him by the arm. Then, with quick movements, he overturned it and neutralized it. While he was crashing with him, another was already attacking him from behind, but he managed to feel him. With great speed, he turns sharply and simultaneously takes a swing. It was an even stronger blow than the first guard. The other two immediately stopped and stopped attacking. Lunui calmly said, why would they continue to attack and why did they stop? And that drugged guy was just shocked. The girl was screaming at Chitsunyan to stop it quickly. And who gave him the right to do that? She ordered him to stop them. And why is he just sitting there watching? He started to say that they were making such a big fuss over such a small thing. 
He went on to say that he noticed that Lung Yu really took a very nasty attitude to their proposal. So he smiled and said that he wanted to see what he was really capable of. She was just looking for such an answer, and she realized that words could not solve anything. And he continued to be angry at those guards, saying that they were very weak and stupid. He said that he did not think that such work was suitable for them. In an instant, all the remaining guards rushed into action at the same time. But what that guy saw just threw him into shock. In an instant, all the guards there were destroyed, and Lunui slowly started to walk towards that guy. He was smiling, and small lightning bolts of energy were striking around him. He said that it was finally his turn. He fell to the ground and began to ask Lunui to stop. He claimed that, in fact, at the last moment, he had asked the guards to stop. He screamed in fright that Liun Yu should not come near him because he was the mayor's son. But the girl noticed the lightning near him and immediately realized that it was the power of lightning. And why did he have it? Because he didn't use any special skills in the arena. Lun Yu began to accelerate, and all the power of that attribute began to accumulate in his hand. He was just scared to death and just begged for Liun Yu to stop. But he realized that he could not show weakness in such a situation, and he had to see it through. At one point, there was a very loud explosion. It almost filled the whole room. Immediately after the blow, Liun Yu jumped back to a safe distance. He looked at them all carefully and was ready for any turn of events. That girl from the elites started saying that this guy really has special powers. At that moment, a blue light began to appear in the smoke. When the smoke cleared, it became clear that it was a protective barrier that protected the guy from destruction. Suddenly, a smoky voice sounded. No one knew where it was coming from, and it said that it also had something to show. Lun Yu thought that it was a voice transmission technique, so there was another sage out there somewhere. Those people from the elite were surprised to hear that voice. They had never heard it before. Liun Yu smiled and said that if the mayor really decided to talk in person, he would not hide. And Liun Yu also said that for some reason, the mayor was very worried that he was not going to kill his son. Because it is very low to kill someone who is ready to rely on a rich daddy for everything. These words made the guy even more angry, but he could do nothing about it. In an instant, that voice spoke to that girl, Chin Yu, and she immediately said that she could hear and was ready for orders. The voice said that she should take the guy to the garden in the backyard because he wanted to talk to him in person. As they were walking, Liun Yu asked how long they had to walk because their house is really big. In a moment, he quietly turned to the Queen of Shadows and asked her if she was with him. In a moment, he heard a very quiet answer. Lung Yu said that as soon as she saw the old man, she should try to copy his skills before he could find out. A moment later, they entered another room, and she said that they had brought that guy. The old man began to say that he really did not look like a simple boy. When Lun Yu looked at him more closely, he was very surprised, because he was a really old man and very weak. The old man said that he was very happy to see Liun Yu. And Liun Yu himself looked at his body and thought what had happened to his body and whether it was possible to live with such a body. The mayor noticed that Liun Yu was very surprised and did not expect to see what he saw. Then he began to say that he could see that Liun Yu was very surprised and that he did not expect to see a legendary saint. And in the process, he took off the cloak he was wearing. This is what a great saint really looks like, just a very frail old man. She said that her father used secret techniques to influence the saints, but in the end they fought him off, and he has looked like this ever since. He said that Ewer took a closer look at the boy, because she was not getting any younger with the years. She started to tell her father not to talk nonsense, and he said that he was already worried because she still had no one. Then Liun Yu turned to the mayor and said that he had really called him there to look at their beautiful family relationship. He smiled and said that he had actually called him to talk about the Lee sect because he really needed the help of a strong man in the city. Liun Yu listened to him carefully, and he said that he wanted to test the power of the musician's guild together with the Chin Yun sect. He also said that everyone understood that he would not live long. He went on to say that when he died, the heavenly city would change dramatically, and as the head of the city and the one who protects those lands, he did not want Tang Yun to be captured by outside forces. Leo Nui immediately began to answer that his sect was very small and simple, so he did not think he could help them. And he thought that he did not want to delve into their problems and get involved with them. 
After that, the mayor asked that Liunyu come closer to him. When he approached, the mayor told him to put his ears up because he wanted to tell him something. He said quietly that he had heard that the Lee sect did not really exist. In an instant, Liunyu jumped back and was shocked. He immediately asked how he knew. Liunyu himself wondered how the mayor could know this and whether he might know about his other secrets. Leonui looked at him and wondered what he wanted to do next. Maybe he would try to threaten him into doing something. But suddenly the old man began to cough and told his daughter Yur to leave them alone because she did not need to hear that conversation. She began to walk away, and the mayor said that he would not offend Liunyu no matter how much he worried. Leonui was in a very strange position. He did not know what to think. But he decided to sit down and thought that whatever happens, happens. He asked the mayor dejectedly how he knew that his sect did not exist. The answer simply stunned Leung Yu. The mayor said that he had just said it, but Leung Yu's reaction gave it all away. The mayor went on to say that his people had been looking for information about the sect everywhere, but had found nothing, and then he suspected that it might not exist at all. The mayor also said that he still knows that Lun Yu does not actually have the blood of a sage, and it will not be possible to persuade him to cooperate with them and force him to make contact with other sects. Lun Yu said that they forgave him for his position. So the mayor said that he would not tell anyone the truth about his sect, so let him join him. Liun Yu could not understand what the old man wanted, because he already knew that the sect did not exist, and if he joined them, they would not become stronger. Then the mayor said that it did not matter whether the sect existed or not. He said that the truth does not play a role in such a problem, and the main thing is that in this case, he will be able to instill fear in his own opponent, which is what the mayor really wants. Li Yun Yu was quite confused. He did not know what to do. In a moment, the mayor offered him to take that special thing. Li Yun Yu thought it was a jade, and the mayor began to say that Yur was a very nice girl. She is an orphan. When he met her on the street, she was much thinner than she is now. He adopted her in, and she is still trying to repay him. He said that he would die at any moment. His son Yanner would certainly only help everything to fall apart, and Yuer would be left alone again, and this time, it would be harder for her. The mayor said that he had been watching him for a long time since the competition, and he had decided that he wanted to pass his daughter on to him. The mayor said that he just wanted to die in peace, and Leonyu started saying that, in other words, he wanted Leonyu to become his son-in-law. He began to smile and said that in that case, he was waiting at the bottom with his bride. Because being a son-in-law in their time was a difficult business, he had already imagined how he would live like a king. But just a moment later, Leonyu simply stood up and left, and the mayor said nothing more. Leonyu went up to Yuer and was happy and hugged her, and she asked him if they were done. She was also in a good mood and returned to say goodbye to her father. Her father didn't answer her, and she asked Leon Yu what they had talked about, and he said why should he tell her. Then they went down the stairs, and she asked him what it meant that he had decided to join them. Leon Yu said that he hadn't decided yet. For a moment, she asked in surprise why he had that jade pendant. He was just waving it around. Leon Yu said that her father gave him that pendant. He asked what was wrong with that thing and what good could it do. She instantly pulled out the same pendant, and Lunui was surprised that she had one. She said they could be connected and would fit perfectly. That key is a rune of the seventh dimension. When two holders reach the ascension, the key will guide them to the disclosure of the main secret. He must be very careful with that key and not tell anyone that he has it. Otherwise, he will be hunted. Leon Yu listened carefully to what she was saying and did not ask any questions. This reaction to the turnover made her so angry that he was not interested in the details. So she abruptly turned around and said that none of this mattered.